What's going on, guys? Welcome to Revolver Live, the gaming podcast that says forget the past. The future belongs to the nerds. I'm the Beastly Gamer. Today I'm joined by the coolest dudes in gaming, my Revolver co-hosts, starting with the host with the most, Wilson. What's going on, brother? How you feeling this week? Doing great, man. We just got done playing some PUBG. I got, uh, let's see, I got some new uh, gaming accessories. I got I got a new keyboard. You see that, that lighting wow. right there? Mm. Oh, that's very young, nice. Fancy. Damn. Yeah. And I got this awesome Destiny 2 mouse pad. Oh, chill. Yo, where can I get one of those? You got to you gotta get paid by Bungie, man. It's exclusive. Dude, have you read my YouTube comments? Does it have to have dead games on there, or can it have good games as well? Make it have both. <laughs> Never mind. Let me ask you. I'm looking for a new mouse pad, uh, but I'd like something maybe Overwatch-inspired, and uh, I could use something with a nice, uh, firm uh, wrist rest that maybe cradles my wrist in one spot. You got anything that could really cover me there? It's funny you ask, because um, <laughs> we, me and Sam were looking at Overwatch mouse pads uh, earlier this week, and there's some pretty risky ones out there. Uh, there's one that's suiting the style that you need. Uh, there's one that's tracer and doggy style, yeah, and her, her ass, ass is the wrist pad. Yes. Oh, Basically perfect. Immediately knows tracer. what we're talking about. <laughs> yes, <laughs> there's like other characters. There's ones with uh, Reaper. He has like yeah. big pecs, big yeah. biceps that you could, oh. you know. Oh, I can mm -hmm. rest my wrist on Reaper's biceps? Yes. Very comfortable. Oh, I like that. Mm -hmm. That's but a very you know, you feeling. Want, you don't want to waste your rough. money on those, so, Brian. You want the ones with the ass, man. Those are they, they they offer the best support for your wrist. You won't even feel like you're playing a game. It really offers great, great cushion, especially when you're doing a lot of pushing. Yeah. Mm. Tracer's like ass it. is the way to go. Like it. <laughs> Briar Rabbit. How are you doing this week? God damn it. You look Yo, like what's going are, on, you man? Gonna, are you gonna introduce me, Beastly? <laughs> I've been playing uh, a lot of different stuff, actually. Destiny 2, Curse of Osiris came out this week. That's been a lot of fun. Um, I know it's uh, controversial, to say the least. Uh, but, you know, being the shill that I am, uh, I'm definitely enjoying it. Uh, I've also been playing the Monster Hunter beta that we'll talk about a little bit later. And uh, I'm dying to get back into Assassin's Creed, man. I am absolutely in love with that game. And we got back into PUBG today uh, and won and, a and chicken and dinner. Happened? Got a, a little chicken dinner on the brand new desert map. Uh, that I, I tell you, that game has come a long way since we started playing it. It's incredible. Wow. Yeah, it, it it really feels almost like a different game. Oh shit! Well, I, you know, it's been even longer for me since uh, I've played it. You guys have played many games since the last time I've even attempted. So we're gonna have to talk about that later. I'm excited to hear the news too. I saw the new level. It was all over the internet this week. Yeah, Gary Motherfucking Diaz, how you feeling this week, my friend? festive it's december and uh we're all about to have an old man visit our house and empty his sack at least i know i am so it's uh that's what the like holidays are all about for the people who are watching the, the the live feed or us on youtube today take a gander at gary diaz's magnificent sweater <laughs> it is very festive christmas sweater that has m bison fighting blanca and we all know Blanca's about to get his ass kicked that is one of the coolest sweaters i've ever seen when you first came to the pre-show, I, I wanted to get on you and say, what the hell is that? And then Wilson kind of hit me the game and said, Beastly, look, take a close look at what you're looking at. So right. I found it in the uh, in the kids section at Macy's, so all sorted. Well, <laughs> good. Well, you, you know what? For you, it'll double. You can, you can give it to your son as soon as you get done taking it off. So, you know, something nice for the, for the young one. You Probably a bit small for him, stuff. but yeah, we'll get there. Probably so. You guys know we weren't available last week. We had some issues. One of our, our co-hosts was sick. I had some real major internet issues, so we decided to stay away for a week, but we're back. God damn it, it's been a, a really tough time for me in my heart to be away from you guys this long, but I'm very, very excited to be back, uh, to see all these beautiful faces, even you, Gary. And for the people joining us today for the first time, Revolver Live is a gaming podcast with six revolving topics. You can be a part of the show by submitting your topics for consideration or giving us a review at revolvergamescast at gmail.com. That's revolvergamescast at gmail.com. We go live every Sunday at 6 o'clock p.m. Eastern at twitch.tv forward slash Briar Rabbit. The video is then shared on YouTube at Briar Rabbit's YouTube channel and my channel, Beastly Gamer. And if you're unable to see the live video or the 
the video on YouTube, check us out in podcast form on Podbean, iTunes, or your favorite podcast service provider. And if you're going to be on podcast, please leave us a review like so many have. And actually, Wilson's going to talk about that now. Yeah, man. I got uh, two good ones here. Uh, first one's from Texas Magpie. It says, these four <laughs> characters bring the common man's point of view to gaming podcasts. Revolver Live is a hilarious joyride through the world of gaming with the banana splits and a smoke-filled van. Intelligent, witty, humorous commentary on video games and development and bags of phalluses. <laughs> Great show. <laughs> Never miss a live stream. Well done. Well Thank done. Thank you. God, mm-hmm. spoken so much truth. We got uh, one more here. Uh, uh-huh. from Vance883. Revolver is a great podcast. It has a perfect balance between funny and informative conversation. Plus, I'm still amazed Beastly has a toaster that plays SNES games. Uh, we all are. We all are. Well done. Oh, no. You know we had to get it. Doubles as a harmonica. I, I picked that one on purpose so you had an excuse to bring that out. Yeah. I mean, it's always close. Mm-hmm. If you enjoy Revolver, just wait for the sequel. What we're going to do is we're going to do five questions instead of six, and then we're going to charge you in a DLC for the sixth one. It's a <laughs> great idea. I've never seen it done in a sequel before. But, um, Jesus. And then the it's... next week, we're going to charge you again, but we're just going to give you the exact same content. It's going to be the, basically the same show. We're just going to talk about the same stuff over again. We're we're questions. Yeah. We have to do it. No. You'll have to idea. call PSN to get your refund. <laughs> <laughs> Working well. oh, the, and the hits keep coming. <laughs> oh, my goodness. All right, so Gary Diaz, we got some pretty exciting news today. Well, for the people watching and listening, at least they'll be able to join in on our, our joy and excitement of what's about to happen. But before we do that, would you like to give a word to our sponsors? I will. We um, once more are absolutely flabbergasted and astonished. Honored is the word to be sponsored by the great, the mighty, Bagofdicks.com. Bagofdicks.com um, kindly offered to go in with us to give us 20% off for our listeners using the code Revolver Live. Um, I'd like to take you on a little journey of what Bag of Dicks means to me, and I hope it means just as much to you guys. There are times in your life when sometimes you want to give that special someone the perfect gift, a gift so precious and majestic the mere flowers. Perfume or aftershaves won't cut it. No. For times like these, there's only one gift that will show them the caliber of your persons and your true intentions. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is a small jewelry box filled with a variety of colored male genitals. Bagadix.com offers an anonymous mail order service where you, yes, you, can send anyone you so desire some purple-headed yogurt slingers. They have a smorgasbord of products to suit each and every one of your specific pork sword needs, including the brand new Boxo Singing Dicks. My personal favorite. Revolver are pleased to announce our sponsorship and as of next week or this week in fact we're offering you our perverted and debauched listeners the exclusive and ludicrous promotion of 20% off your order from bagofdicks.com using the code REVOLVERLIVE I can't guarantee that the recipient of your giggle stick love package will offer you the sexual favours that you so desire but let's be honest it probably can't hurt your chances that much either it won't hurt (laughs) if you're convinced about the perfect marriage of penis and confectionery then head straight to bagadix.com and remember your Revolver Live promo code for that sweet discount on your order of baloney ponies. Thank you for listening. Yo, I feel like Bagadix, a Bagadix would be like the first, perfect first date kind of gift, right? Oh, yeah. You know, instead of bringing flowers to the girl's door or, or the boy, you know, whatever, um, you bring a bag of dicks, right? And when you hand over that bag of dicks, it's a nice, you know, nice gesture. Hey, you know, like, you know, like a, a first date gift, right? You hand over that bag of dicks, and you instantly know if this person is compatible. Because if yes. you're the kind of dude who would give somebody a bag of dicks, you want to be going out with the kind of gal that would like to get a bag of dicks. Yes. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's a good point. Like it's you know, a I'm g- instant icebreaker. <laughs> I'm going to take one from my my trials, um, my trials of Osiris um, tips here. Bag of dicks sets the tone. If you bring the bag of dicks and she's down, that sets the tone. You know that's going to be a it relationship sets the tone. that lasts. Sets so, the tone. Yep, yep. Uh, just like the first round. Of bag of dicks. Actually, we got some. Um, we got some uh, bag of dicks in the mail this week. Me and Beastly both did. Uh, and I got to say, I was really impressed. <laughs> they have, it comes in this packaging. This is Bod Luxury Gifts, <laughs> which I thought was hilarious, like right from the get-go. So we're going to open these things and take a look at them. 
We uh, have a live unboxing. A live unboxing. So a very nice uh, kind of jewelry case, it seems. Yeah, very quality. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, what what kind of girl or guy wouldn't like something like that, Brian? Okay, just, so it, you open it. This is great. You open it, <laughs> and you're presented <laughs> with a bag of dicks, and it says "press here." <laughs> so it sings to you. The bag of dicks does, in fact, carry a tune. <laughs> Everybody out there, go to bagofdicks.com after the show. Put in the discount code Revolver Live and claim your <laughs> magnificent gift. BC, I, I, I want to hear your it. dick sing. I have to do it. <laughs> I, I haven't actually tasted a bag of dicks yet. I'm um, looking oh, forward to I'm this sorry. tremendously. It didn't work because I didn't pull out. See, you gotta pull out. <laughs> yeah, he never tab. pulls out. She's weak. Oh, some people have said. <laughs> never ever once has pulled out. <laughs> never. It's, it's not that's the way to do it. It's not as vernacular. <laughs> oh wow! <laughs> this is the only time you guys will ever see me put a dick in my mouth. <laughs> Also not true. <laughs> <laughs> you got me. Basie, oh, wow. can we hear that sweet song one more time? I believe when I pulled out, I pulled out too hard, and I think the I saw the battery come flying out. So pull your back out. <laughs> not used well, to it. Basie pulls out just as hard as he pushes in. It's it's pretty sad. Believe it or not, I had this conversation with my wife. And you for you anybody absolutely- interested, there is nutritional information on your bag of dicks. <laughs> And can you describe to me the uh, the taste of that dick in your mouth right now? Yeah, the, the, don't be afraid to use words like dirty and sensual. It's sweeter than I had imagined. Mm. Oh. <laughs> we got another like, box here. I'm going to open this one up, too. Oh, man. Like what, and dicks. I, like what I think it would it's actually be like. The, the flavor is unique. It's unlike oh. anything I've ever tasted before. The candy is not really soft. It's pretty hard. Very firm. This is a multi-colored bag of dicks. <laughs> Amazing. So there's ethnic diversity. I like it. Bag of dicks does not discriminate. Wow. It represents Red. green, blue, yellow, and pink dicks. So Red Magpie has a very important question that I think we should address. What's the yeah. protein count on those? Uh, the protein <laughs> count. Let's see here. We got total fat. Zero. No fat. They're fat-free dicks. Fat-free dicks. Uh, no saturated fat, no trans fat, no cholesterol, no sodium in these dicks. Uh, 1.2% carbohydrates, uh, dietary fiber, very little fiber, uh, total sugar is 2.9 grams, uh, zero protein, unfortunately, in the dicks. No protein? No That's protein. Not a, that was you, bring good your own. Real you bring your own. <laughs> that's amazing so if anything they're they're quite healthy you know Look, you can you can chomp down on a bag of them you don't eat de- dick because it uh, you know because it's nutritious you, you eat dick because it's fun <laughs> <laughs> that's it that's it amazing and guys if you want to get your own dicks as i said head on over to bag use the code revolver live save yourself 20 percent, and you yourself could have a bag of dicks in the mail they don't just do singing dicks they do the the standard dicks as i said really it's the gift that just keeps on giving even when you, don't want it to. you know this is as far as i've ever gone in this direction and i always thought i'd feel ashamed i feel pretty fucking good right now yeah it feels good man Amazing. <laughs> um, there's a uh, again. If you stay listening right to the end, there may be talk about a giveaway, which uh, will be a surprise to not just you but also the hosts. I've been keeping that one in back pocket, but oh. uh, listen right to the end, guys. So anyone listening on the audio, um, there'll be details of it. We'll be running that all week long, but um, details come at the end. Awesome. So Revolver Live episode twenty would have been twenty one, but we can't turn back time. It's going to be a great show. We got some great topics lined up for you guys. Who would like to get us started? Um, well, I think Bungie should get us started. Yeah, I mean, they, they got us started all already this week. Something I happened. Do it. What Osiris. happened? They dropped that uh, that fatty Curse of Osiris DLC, and uh, I mean, I'm just going to come out and say right away. Uh, I know it's an unpopular opinion, but. I'm really enjoying it. Like, of course, it could be longer. You know, they could give us a couple hours of content and, you know, we can give us a couple days worth of content and it still wouldn't be enough. But um, 
I've had a huge like Osiris boner since D1, basically. Mm-hmm. Um, he's the most notorious warlock, if not one of the most notorious guardians of all time. So it was kind of cool to see him get kind of fleshed out, see what he's all about. Um, some changes came with Curse of Osiris. Um, we had a lot of uh, quality of life changes that came with it. So, I mean, my first impressions was I, I really enjoyed it. What about you, Briar? Uh, I am enjoying the game. Uh, I'm enjoying Destiny as a whole, and I think that the improvements that Curses of Osiris brought to the table um, are really cool. Uh, it doesn't; they don't erase the problems with the base game, and in fact, for a lot of people, they they add to more problems. Uh, one of the one of the big deals with uh, Curse of Osiris is that. Uh, players who were playing the base game Destiny uh, got locked out of playing prestige raid or prestige activities, uh, as well as Trials of Osiris. So anybody who bought uh, vanilla Destiny 2 uh, can no longer play Trials of Osiris, Prestige Nightfalls, or the Prestige Raid. All things that they were doing uh, before the before the DLC dropped. And I think that's a big deal. I think Bungie needs to address that because it's not acceptable. Um what I like about the DLC, though, is it gives me a reason to do a bunch of the stuff that I was not doing prior to the DLC dropping. Uh, I'm grinding for weapons. I'm going into strikes. I'm doing, uh, I'm doing adventures. I'm, I'm doing a lot of different stuff uh, as opposed to just being straight up PvP or grinding public events, period. Right? I was either doing one of those two things. I guess occasionally I would raid as well. Um, also, the the raid layer, I think, is some of the best content that Destiny has ever, or Bungie has ever produced. The raid layer is stupendous. It's short, but it is absolutely amazing. It's one of the best bosses I think I've ever fought in my entire life, in, in any game. Oh, man, I can't wait to get into that. I mean, I, I walked in into the, the new raid location, and uh, it was just me. I was getting ready to go to sleep. And it looked very similar to what we'd already seen. I did, and in fact, I didn't know if it was a completely new raid. I knew it was a shorter version of a raid, so I was thinking it was a new way to play through the old raid. But Willie told me pre-show uh, that it had new new bosses, and for the most part, Kate and I we played through the campaign, the the Christmas Osiris campaign. We enjoyed it. Um, Osiris is a bad dude, man, especially at the end of it, and you see him just coming out and just fucking up the boss at the very end of, of the campaign. But Kate looked at me at the end of the, you know, the, when we finished it and said, it just feels, it feels more like just the same old, same old. Uh, and I, I looked at her and I asked her what was wrong with that. Uh, to be totally honest, I really enjoyed the DLC. I enjoyed the new maps for the Crucible. Uh, it just added some new, much needed flavor to the game. I know a lot of people are kind of upset with it. Uh, for me, it gave us about three Three hours worth of more content, not counting the raid, you know, just spending our time. And like like Brian said, we were doing adventures, something we hardly ever did before, uh, and, and getting more weapons and really enjoying ourselves. So I'm looking forward to getting to that raid, seeing what it's all about, and really fleshing out all of this content and seeing exactly what's available. Uh, and it kind of makes me salty that some of the, the emotes uh, are gone from season one. <laughs> and we'll never be able to get those again. I had to explain to Kate the, that whole situation, but I'm really excited about some of the new content. I do have the selfie emote already. Beastly. Oh, you did? You got it? That's nice. the baddest damn. You know, that is so awesome, Briar. The one that, I want the most is one of the year one ones that I didn't get, or the vanilla ones I didn't get, is the butt floss one, where it looks like he's flossing his ass with a towel or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, I never that got either. that. I love that one so much, and I never got it. I, I think it's commonly referred to as the director emote. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. It's a true story. It's director's favorite. It, uh, I, mean, it, I hear you. Oh, go ahead, uh, Gary. That's cool. I was just going to say, for me, um, Destiny 2, uh, at least how it is, the way I describe it, it, it isn't the game I play. It's a game I play. And I think if you lean into the rhythm of it, you'll have a lot more fun with it. Destiny 2 feels like a game that you can enjoy to the fullest, investing a lot less hours than you needed to for Destiny 1 in, which is not necessarily a bad thing because it's like, you know, I play a lot of different games um, and I'm able to, you know, hit up trials on Friday with the boys, maybe do a raid, maybe get my milestones out one day and then forget about it for the rest of the week. You know, I don't have to come back and feel that my, my nose is to the grindstone. Um, but if you do want to do more, it has given you some more stuff. Has it revolutionized the game? No. The one thing that I do um, want to discuss or criticize Bungie about is 
did we ever find out what the curse of Osiris was? Yeah, male pattern baldness. I think, Briar, you got into that. I think you've you've figured out that the curse of Osiris and all guardians is uh, premature hair loss. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, the light, it's a side effect of the light. It's, uh... <laughs> we yeah, have I, heard you, I heard if you play with your hair. light too much. Beastly go, had an afro uh, three months ago, and then he started playing Destiny 2. Look at him now. Gone. 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 I, uh, on, a, on a serious note, though, I think the curse of Osiris is the fact that he has to, he can never, like she told him, I shouldn't, I don't know, it's not really much of a spoiler, but I mean, he was invited back to the city, and he said, no, my place is here. Like, I think the curse is that <clears throat> once you, you kind of, once you get, live in the Vex reality or simulations as long as he have, that has become his reality. I, I mean, and he you, can't stop and he can't rest. That's a curse, in my opinion. You can't chill. Right. You gotta constantly I mean, bounce from he, reality. He said it himself, Wilson, at the end of the, the campaign. He said, we have unlimited worlds to explore and all the time in the world to do it. So yep. I think, for me, that's kind of what the curse is. He's cursed to be, I guess, banished from what, what typical Guardians would consider reality to, to the Vex world. And so to me, that's kind of what the curse feels like. Yeah, Anybody else I mean, disappointed that he didn't show up. He didn't become like a tower or vendor type guy. A little bit. I was kind of hoping he was going to come back and fill in for the speaker. To be honest, I was kind of hoping that too. Because that was kind like of natural, a lore, right? It's, yeah, it seemed like a natural setup. We yeah. just lost our speaker. He used to be like basically second in command of the speaker, right? Mm -hmm. If I'm he not was crazy. The, he was the vanguard, uh, the warlock vanguard leader, and then he was him and Saint Fourteen were kind of the proteges of the speaker. Right. He was kind so, of grooming one, both of them for command someday, in my opinion, um, according to the D one lore. So for um, him to get like a twenty second cutscene and then just disappear was oh. a little disappointing. Yeah, it was, really? but that's kind of Osiris, though. I mean, you know, he takes you out and he doesn't call for a month or two, and <laughs> you, uh, you guys. Have... <laughs> Given deep, I need to I need to read this lore. This is some serious you know, shit. You've given deep, thoughtful, and you know, lore embedded answers to me about a potentially ridiculous question. Um, because we all know the curse of Osiris is Guardian slang for syphilis. Um, that's why he was banished. He gave everyone the curse of Osiris. That's why Ikora gives him that look. You yeah, dirty motherfucker. Yep. And oh, I've, I I've knew. Been Penicillin for four weeks. I've still got the. I knew Osiris. <laughs> I uh, uh, I don't think it... just so he didn't have to call me back. That was it. Right. I don't like we had touched on earlier. I don't feel like it completely. The changes that they did make completely reworked the game. There's still some gla uh, glaring flaws with end game. You know things that are still in Eververse that we would like to chase outside of the game would be nice. Um, but something else that we kind of didn't really talk about. The Prometheus Lens, oh the most God. OP weapon in Destiny history. Move aside Vex Mythoclast. Move aside, well, maybe not <laughs> Galahorn. It's pretty ridiculous. PvE, but it's pretty damn ridiculous. Move aside Hawkmoon. Move aside everything because Prometheus Lens is here with a 0. 0.3 second time to kill if you tap the trigger on your enemies. Um, needless to say, it's broken as fuck. And we had a pretty good time doing some laser tag trials. Um, it was nice to kind of not take it seriously for once. It's always fun to go for flawless. Once. Yeah, for <laughs> once. I, I, you guys know me. I, I like going flawless. Um, yeah, I do too. I still have a lot of fun with you guys when we were goofing around, but this was truly like we were just having a good time. Um, but the cool thing is, is that, you know, it was so broken. Everybody, including myself, was chasing for it so I could take it into the Crucible and beat up on some other Guardians. Uh, That's all they're using in the Crucible, man. That's oh, it. Basically, yeah. I played Curse of Osiris, or I played Trials for probably four to five hours. On Friday, straight. I probably saw three to four guardians who didn't, who weren't using it. Like it wow. was. I, I assumed that they were just like they were switching their inventory up and made a mistake and got locked out. <laughs> like <laughs> that's my assumption because there's no other conceivable reason not to be using it. Yeah, I mean, it looks like some futuristic Star Wars episode. Whenever you're in the, the Crucible now, all you see is lasers everywhere, everywhere. I mean, it's a fun weapon to use. I just feel like maybe they. <laughs> They gave it to everybody. I mean, if you go to Zerd, you can just buy it day one, and everybody has the most OP weapon in the game. It kind of throws that that whole thing of balance on its ear, if you ask me, because now everybody has the Prometheus lens. Yeah. I'm happy I got one. All right. Gary, do you have any thoughts on the Prometheus lens? You look very depressed. Do you not have one? Did you not see Zerd? 
I've got one. It just it took away my precious hand cannons, and I was salty about it for <laughs> pretty much the whole four hours. I, had I to knew something was wrong. He literally <laughs> was. All he did was talk about how much he wanted to be playing with a hand cannon. You see how sad he was? <laughs> I mean, I knew something was up. Well, you Gary... can't, I mean, it's all well and good. I mean, it's fun to do for a weekend, but... I play right. Destiny for the hand cannon fantasy. I want to be a space cowboy. I want to jump around. I want to fort at people. That's what I want to do. And when I'm just sitting there like tap, 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 on every corner with this fucking laser beam of death. I don't know. If it's still a fort tap to the face, if you really just want to fort tap people. I don't know. We had fun because we were playing with friends. I wouldn't I wouldn't choose. I haven't been in the Crucible since playing trials with buds that that's it for me i don't I, enjoy i wonder it. so when people like start talking about how they hate destiny and they're yeah, we've seen seen many many content creators twitch streamers youtubers you know competitive players just say oh that's it i'm done with destiny we saw skill up make a video today uh where you know he had the infamous review about destiny and you know, he basically said he's done with Destiny at this point. We've seen Luminosity just say, I'm done with Destiny. <clears throat> I wonder how much of my enjoyment with Destiny just stems from playing with friends. Like, I just, I'm so into playing with my friends that like, I'm willing to just forgive the game. Now, at this point, it's getting harder and harder, right? As Bungie makes these, like, huge mistakes, like... Locking up, blocking off content that people had access to, you know, the day Previously, before. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know, like this ridiculous, ridiculous Eververse trading company situation that we're in now. I, I wonder, I, I often wonder that it, how much of my addiction to Destiny is just based on my addiction to my friends. Uh, it's that's, always that's... been about that for me, man. Like, there, I mean, you look back into the D1 days during our content lulls between um expansions, I mean. Me and some of my friends that are even in chat right now, I mean, we, it would just be an excuse for us to get together, shoot the shit, laugh, hang out, and maybe get that last exotic that you're chasing or something before the next <laughs> expansion. Yeah. To me, that's what it's always been about. Um, it uh, It's it's difficult now trying to, to juggle two platforms because I am enjoying the PC experience a lot, on I especially the Crucible side. You know what I mean? Um but the bulk of my friends list is is on console, you know. So that's why when Curse of Osiris dropped, I said, you know what, I'm gonna I'm gonna start it on the console and make that my main for a couple days. And then Briar hit me up on Thursday night and was like, Hey, do you want to raid on PC in 13 hours? And I was like, <laughs> uh, clicked buy the expansion on PC and was like, Yeah, I'll do that. I can yeah, do I can that. Do that. <laughs> I just clicked buy. I was like, I'll be there, man. So uh, got to do that crispy uh, raid layer run with DCP, which, like Briar said, if you guys haven't had a chance to jump into that, dude, it's it's a blast. Don't go into it thinking you're going to get copious amounts of loot. No. Don't go into it thinking it's going to be the end-all example of a raid. Go into it for the experience and have fun. You know what I mean? Because it is a damn good time. And It is. <clears throat> that that, that M-Boss, uh, what's his name? Do you remember his name? Argus? I don't remember. There was so much shit going on, Briar. Yeah, the last boss of that of that raid or raid lair is literally, I think, the most amazing experience I've ever had fighting a boss in a game. Like it, it was just, it was outstanding. The amount of movement, the amount of coordination you had to do. Ar Argos. Argos, yeah. but it always felt <laughs> under control. You know what I mean? Like there were there were times. I, I, was the uh, was the final boss in the uh, the Rise of Iron raid? Axis. Axis. Thank you. Mm -hmm. There were there were parts of that that felt somewhat random. Like you could you could your raid run could get kind of messed up by something that was a little bit outside of your control, or if somebody on the other side of the map messed up, all of a sudden that you know you're in deep shit because. But this was a cool ass encounter. I really enjoyed it. It was, I, man. I, I can't wait I till thought... we can all get together and play it on PS4. Well, you guys Beastly, let me know. We'll, we'll have to talk about that a little later on the show because we got something to announce about uh, a new revolver adventure. It's always I mean, it's, every day is a revolver heroic. adventure. It's, adventure. it's almost a new sensory experience for not just us but our viewers. It's it's revolutionary. It's life changing. So stick around and. Uh, I think you might be overselling a little bit. <laughs> no, it's revolutionary. I think I wanted to say shook. about uh, Curse of Osiris DLC was 
I feel like they've or they're taking a step in the right direction. They got a ways to go. They got a bit of a mess, bit of a PR mess to clean up. Um, which is kind of why I feel like they made Zer sell the Prometheus lens so that everyone I heard if you don't even have the expansion, you could still buy it. So yeah. that yeah. those people who didn't have the expansion oh, you wow. tell they're covering their ass right now because they know they're I on mean, thin ice with a lot of people. Yeah. And I've been one of those people, you know. I, I try to look at the positive side of things, but I assure you, I'm just as fucking pissed and thirsty for content as everybody else. So just chill. Just a quick, <laughs> All right. quick, quick thirty second input on what Briar said about Destiny and what keeps him coming back, keeps him addicted, is playing with friends. I don't play with as many friends as you guys do, but uh, when I do play, I'm always playing with Kate or playing with one of you guys or one of my subscribers, and having that connection. Briar, it really became solidified in my mind when we when we really started doing raids together and meeting all these new people and talking to shit, you know, just shooting shit with them and just having a good time. Yeah, I don't. I think if that aspect of Destiny wasn't available, this game would have died a long time ago. So I think it's a good uh, habit or a good problem to have to be addicted to it because you're addicted to your friends. I think that's an actually really cool thing. I was talking to Fork Knife Spoon about that uh, a couple of days ago. He gave me a call. He's the guy who uh, does the um, the on air PCs. He's the guy that builds the on air PCs, and uh, he I've raided with him a couple of times now. He's like, at one point I could hardly shoot because I was laughing so hard at the jokes you and Wilson were cracking. And I'm like, that's why I like doing raids, man. <laughs> like, because if I could just we're in there, you got a bunch of dudes in there in a somewhat tough situation. You know, cracking jokes and making fun of each other and, you know, dick jokes or, you know, whatever it is going to be. My favorite times in a raid is just hanging out with a bunch of people who are, are here to have a good time. And uh, as soon as as soon as I get into a raid team that everybody is like super serious and yelling at other people for not doing their job. I want to back out because that's not that's not the Destiny experience I like. That's the experience I love is we're not talking about Destiny. We're talking about, you know, who knows what. We're talking about, you know, uh, ch chili cones or some shit. <laughs> <laughs> the Louisiana Purchase. Yeah, the Louisiana Purchase. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's always a good time, man. The banter is always what makes it for me. And then, you know, you get yeah. through and, hey, if you get some loot, you get some loot. You know what right. I mean? It's, it's, yeah. not the, uh, it's not the destination. It's the journey, man. Yeah. Yeah. Like any good love life. Um, all right. So. Moving on to our next topic, I think that this topic is really cool. i got to find out who came up with it because I really love the idea. Mm. And this topic is Revolver the Game. Now, who came up with this topic? Uh, and... This is Wilson. Oh. That would be me. <laughs> Have at it, sir. Take the floor. This is All right, man. Cool the topic. Revolver crew has been greenlit to star in a new game. <laughs> what kind of game is it going to be? You know, you could choose like uh, four different mini games or one campaign featuring each member first person shooter rpg text-based moba survival or any other genre what role were the entire crew play in the game are we going to have microtransactions what would they be we can uh, also get some suggestions from you chat that'd be awesome so if you guys got anything in chat definitely shout oh, it out to shit. us I, um, watch chat. I got an example <laughs> here um just to kind of get you in the zone here so we've got a four-player side-scrolling beat-em-up similar to TMNT on the NES or SNES. It's going to be 8-bit uh, and 16-bit, where each of us would have a special power-up move unique to us. The story premises is Beastly's coveted Yobo was stolen by the evil corporation of Sony for reverse engineering, and the crew must fight their way through levels of bosses to get back and save Beastly's treasured Yobo. Yes, I like it. I like that it. That sounds amazing. So it's a it's a side scrolling beat 'em up. Mm hmm. Okay. So what are like our special powers in this situation? Well, that's what we get to decide. Like, um, oh, okay. all right. Yeah, I, I, I well, feel like yeah. I feel like um, Gary's would be something like PC Master Race related, where uh, well, oh, like, he's enough, got he's got game. like he's got mice like nunchucks that he swings around. It's pretty good. The, um, in this game, actually, if you select me as a playable character, because we're actually going to save BC Jobo, it's a surprise quick ending, and I just don't bother getting up. <laughs> I just stay on the character select screen and say, fuck it, let him have it. Plot twist, Gary was in on it. <laughs> yeah, Gary isn't one of us. He's the final boss. He's the guy who stole. No, he's not even the final boss. He's the guy whispering into the final boss's ear. <laughs> mm -hmm. Plot twist. There's a major plot twist in the game. See, we see, all Wilson. think it was Gary who is the boss, but in fact, he wasn't the boss. He's like the mid-boss. Yep. The, the real boss 
the real boss comes like in uh, I guess part five of the game when his son grows up and takes the helm becomes the true leader of the PC master race. Um, I had kind of a similar idea, Wilson. Uh, and it wasn't like Streets of Rage or anything, but it was a traditional beat up fighting game like Mortal Kombat or Street Fighter. Oh, okay. And, uh, the, because to me, that's I think all our viewers would love to see us get into a room and beat the shit out of each other. I think that would. What the? I just for I, for some reason I would like to see that. Distic ass viewers do we have PC shit. So, um, in in this game, is this the viewers or is this you, Beastly? You just want to beat the shit out of the rest of the cast. Just I, I'll settle for Gary. Just give me Gary. No, but no. Um, I was thinking of a fighting game, and of course, I can't think of right off the top a huge story, but I know what our moves would be and our character des- designs would be. Of course, each of us would have an assistant character. Uh, Briar, it might be you know one of the characters from PUBG to come in and and snipe someone, or maybe Ooh. Geralt to come in behind you Ooh. and, and, and do yeah, one of his spells, right? And Briar, of course, you would have whichever of because now Destiny Two is out. What's your favorite weapon in Destiny? Uh, I really like the minuet. The minuet. Yeah, that would that would be your main weapon. You'd run up on people, shoot them, beat the hell out of them. Of course, you'd have an epic super move where you pull out a ghost. The ghost would go over to the character and, of course, destroy them. However, a ghost would. Uh, for me, for I like me, it. I go ahead. I said I like it. <laughs> Gary, he would come out with a keyboard and he would just beat the shit out of you with a keyboard. And he, <laughs> He'd run just over keys to his, flying everywhere. Yeah, yeah it would it'd be you know, of course, it would have to be at least sixty frames, and uh, he would like it would be uh, a membrane keyboard though, because he would never he would never sully himself by ruining a, a mechanical yeah, keyboard. I, I gotta take one from chat. His special move keyboard. would his special move would be he would be in sixty frames while everybody else is in yeah. thirty. <laughs> He'd be all perfect. You just beating your ass. You just <laughs> but, unlimited frames. Let's be real. Of course. Yeah. And Gary, his super move would take you out of that game, and you'd be in like a Tron type of environment where you're like five frames, and then he'd come <laughs> above you with like 120 frames and look at you like and just like stomp it. you. Shit. Wilson would just be the stoner. You, I could just see him now. You know, his cap to the <laughs> side. Come out there. He pull out a fucking big ass blunt and just beat you over the head with it. <laughs> His super move would be you disappear inside of a water bong and start drowning. <laughs> no, I have a would... smoke that makes me disappear. I disappear in a cloud of smoke. Yeah, smoke and I bomb. On the other side I like it. Like a smoke bomb. A smoke bomb. And of course, he's got... fighting to get high off of it. I've got I've got big lighter projectiles where I just throw big lighters at everyone. <laughs> and, and for me, you know, I guess for me, one of my assistant characters would probably be, probably be uh, one of the Last of Us characters, or maybe. Uh, Something, someone from Uncharted, but I know what I would really like my assistants to do. Either a squirrel would come in from behind and jump on one of you guys and maul you in the face, and then it would quickly come and jump down my throat, or a super move where I open up a Yobo, and then all of a sudden I'm playing it, and Gary's on the screen. No, and then no I- better yet, it's like the... Uh- not the proton pack, but the thing that Ghostbusters suck ghosts into. Them. You open it up and it puts them in, like you were saying, it brings them inside you to just it. Slide it toward Gary and he just goes right into it. 16 oh, forever, man. bitch. <laughs> Gary, if you and stuck at 16 bit, I know you would choose death over being I think stuck I would, at- to be fair. And it'd be being even in the periphery of the Yobo is, is pretty much death is preferable. So, yeah, yeah stuck inside it, it just sounds like torture. Um, for me, I think if I was going to have a game for all of us here, I think it'd have to be a DLC or a sequel to, to Galgun or maybe a Senran Kagura game. So for me, I feel like, um, we could definitely, we could do it. We could do a Kagura game, you know, like it's like a dynasty warriors kind of like beat them up. Um, and then the, you know, the more aggressive we are, the more of our clothes fly off. Uh, until we're just in our in our skimpy man thongs, just dashing the competition. I think people would pay good money to see that. You know, that, that... briefs kind of guy, boxers yeah. and briefs. You know, boxers. no, no, no. You're you're wearing a man thong. All right. It's my game. That's banana what hammock? Can I wear a banana hammock? Yeah, so... I think it, it would all. You know, that that, that for me would definitely be one of the games there. Or again, we have a Galgun standard game kind of game, but. In fact, I don't think we should be the the character that you play as. I think you should be taking photos of our panties. So different levels, um, and you've got various variants of the the cast. You've got you know got Sailor Beastly, 
you've got uh, pirate beastly you've got you know <laughs> apache indian beastly you've got you know policemen yeah. but basically the, the village people of bc uh, <laughs> across the way and you have to take Wives, various yeah. snaps of them um nobody wants to take pictures of hairy man cracks okay man i i beg to do i bet our chat wants to take pictures of hairy man cracks Look at Brian. <laughs> them, our chat would be down are you king shaman right now beastly is that what you're doing <laughs> <laughs> That's true. I just, Explodes. I just, want to, it's not just Briar in a thong, Mujo. I want to see all of my cast members. I want to see everyone in chat in a thong, unless you're female. I'm not into that shit. <laughs> <laughs> don't play that way. All right, my game would be. I don't know if you guys ever played Clue, right? So my game would be kind of like a Clue situation, where we're all essentially kind of on the same team, except for one of us at random. So it's a four-player game, four-player co-op game, where we got to figure out who killed, uh, I don't know, let's say King Arthur. One of us killed King Arthur, and the rest of us got to figure out which one of the four of us is the murderer, right? So it'd constantly be infighting and suspicion and... So at the beginning and... of the game, you know you know if you are the guilty party and you have right. to lie your way out of it. Yes, yes. Uh, Werewolves Within, right? Isn't that? I was about to say, Brian, that's yeah, Werewolves yeah, yeah. Within. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So it'd be something like that, but you know, starring the cast of the Beastly, and there'd be a lot more dicks. <laughs> <laughs> it'd be some because sort of dick motive. <laughs> there is, there is. I was telling these guys that there's, there should be never a conversation that we're having. That should not be public knowledge because the shit that we talk about in private chat on Twitter, it's it's funnier than I think the show. <laughs> With all the X races, that's that's the uncut version. It really is. So like, we're all, we're constantly making fun of each other. We're constantly, you know, we're we're constantly ribbing each other. I think it would just be a perfect situation to put, you know, a four player. Co-op, co-op game, <laughs> where all like we have to figure out who is the odd man out every time, and it's a different person every time. I think that'd be a lot of fun. Hell yeah! And speaking dope. of that, I think we, we gotta play Where Was Within one day, Briar. I think it'd be yeah. one of the funniest yes. videos of all time. Uh, Wilson is actually buying VR. I think not imminently, but soon. So I think that'd be the perfect time. It'd be a great revolver place. Yes, it would. It would be I so fun, man. Uncrasomatic's got a great suggestion there. A revolver dating sim. I know you guys haven't played Doki Doki, <laughs> but oh. to me, we could be the four members of the Doki Doki Literature Club. So effectively, you are getting to know us all and deciding which of the four of us you want to uh, to date and woo. You know, you can ask questions about If you think that game us. goes to dark places, you just wait till you start dating one of us. <laughs> there you go. You need some... I like some, it psychological horror just go on a date with one of us <laughs> you know you're in trouble horror. as soon as one of us brings a bag of dicks on the first date <laughs> exactly i mean talking about that you mentioned that earlier that you should bring it out to see if the person wants a bag of dicks if you're not the type of person that wants to give a bag of dicks to someone buy one anyway right because the way i see it you can give it to them if they're repulsed you can go great you've passed the test i can date you so yeah. either way use revolver live Go and buy a bag of dicks and you're covered. So yeah, it's you send them anonymously. You could send them anonymously, so you could send it, be there for the reaction, and see how they receive such a wonderful gift. And right. if you, you see them out in there. public, and they're eating candy. Ask, can you have a piece? Yeah. See what see what they're eating. Uh, sure. They reach in their go. pocket, and pull out a multicolored <laughs> dick. You know, that's your kind of day. You can either start a really good conversation with a stranger while you're waiting in line with some candy and you pull out the bag of dicks candy. <laughs> I'm going to see what that would even look like. Let me pull out this bag. You know, I'm sitting there and I got some candy. You want some candy? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> bag of dicks .com. You'll either make a friend or you'll shoo away somebody who's being annoying. Either way, you win. <laughs> yeah, I think whenever you sit down with someone on public transport, you have to be carrying a bag of dicks now. It's part of your... You know, as a viewer of the show or a listener of the show, it's something we expect from you. So I'm down. I think we've got some great games um, there for Revolver. I mean, I think you guys knocked I, it out. If if any of them get made, I'd I'd play them for sure. Um, mm -hmm. Especially the dating sim. I'd love to find out if uh, I date any of you. I'll probably date myself. I'm going to be honest, but um, <laughs> it'd be nice would, to yeah. 
It'd be nice to reject the rest of you. It'd be fantastic. I think I'd have a hard time deciding. I think I'd, mm. yeah. I, I think I'd we have kind a hard of time. already decided this. I think Briar's the only one we'd ever want to be with. It's true. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know though. Me and Briar had a bit of a, a bit of a our first um, disagreement. A tip. <gasps> yeah. What? Remember, remember the Arby's roast beef. Oh man. And you hate Arby's. I said I love it, and I was like, I don't know if you I can marry you Arby's, anymore. Briar? And you, you said you read my thoughts exactly. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> Listen, Arby's is. Don't do it, Briar. You're gonna lose another friend. <laughs> right. We don't have disgusting. Arby's in the UK, so you're safe over there. <laughs> Well, imagine, you, Gary, I'll, let me paint you a picture here. Imagine a ro- roast beef sandwich. I am. That's been uh, cooked fresh and prepared beautifully. And then, uh, hold on, don't eat it yet, because we're going to let that roast beef sandwich sit around for a couple of days. <laughs> then when you walk into the restaurant, we're going to microwave it fresh for you, run it over with a truck, wrap it in some tinfoil, and serve it up hot. <laughs> okay. I'm down. <laughs> I'm in, man. I'm in. I think That's we've just found Arby's Revolver experience. the Restaurant. We've just found Revolver the Restaurant, the restaurant. so we're branching out. <laughs> Serve with a bag of dicks on the side. Well, yeah. I get my mind right enough, man. That sandwich sounds delicious. I'm yeah. it. So you basically have to be on drugs to enjoy that sandwich. <laughs> you got to be no. high off your ass to enjoy Arby's, in my opinion, for sure. It helps. So it's, I'll put it in the same category as you. Yeah. <laughs> 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 oh my god, I forgot about you who that shit was a mistake. All right, I I love you again, Briar. We're good. You who brought me back. You who was in the Revolver Live theme song. <laughs> How do you guys always bring it back to Revolver? Let's get on to the next damn topic. All right. So, so this is gonna be fun. I actually played this myself for about mm, two hours or so with my wife, and I know that Briar got down on it. Uh and I wanna say Wilson, you did too, right? Yeah, I, got, I didn't get to play as much of it as you guys did. But, but Monster yeah. Hunter Beta is out and available, and I played it on PS4. I think it's only out on PS4 right now, correct? I believe so, Sadly, yes. True. I had a blast playing this game, and I wanted to – well, this isn't my topic, but let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. So one of the I, – I agree with UBCs. I, I had a blast playing this game too. Um, but I have a fear about the demo for this game is that it – it's not a true representation of what a Monster Hunter game actually is because it's a very focused experience, right? You get into Monster Hunter uh, World Demo on the PS4, and you are immediately given a quest. You can choose three quests right from the get-go. It's uh, like a beginner, intermediate, and uh, advanced quest. And you are immediately sent out to go kill a big-ass monster. Mm-hmm. That's not exactly what Monster Hunter is. It's part of Monster Hunter, but I'd say mm-hmm. it's like a fifth or a seventh of what the games actually are. Uh, and I had to be reminded of this because after uh, playing Monster Hunter 4 or Monster Hunter uh, World on stream yesterday, I decided to pull out an old DS copy of Monster Hunter 4 uh, and just kind of get back into that for a few hours and just kind of kind of refresh my memory of what a Monster Hunter game is. And a lot of what Monster Hunter games are are very banal quests where you are sent out, go collect 18 mushrooms. Mm -hmm. Go collect uh, seven herbs. Go collect uh, eight rocks. (laughs) You know, like that kind of stuff. And then uh, there's two different quest givers. One one is kind of your caravan quest. One is your, your guild quest. And a lot of the stuff is kind of repeats, and a lot of the stuff is very, but no, you know, it's very much like go find this and bring eight of them back, right? Mm-hmm. And then there, there are also go kill, you know, seven of this type of animal, you know, a, re- a relatively small animal, and then occasionally from the guild you get like the big quest. Mm-hmm. Go kill the big fucker. Go yeah. go get it. Go get it. And that's all they show you in the Monster Hunter World demo. My, my, I'm scared that because you're only showing the most exciting part of Monster Hunter, that you're going to sell a whole bunch of copies of Monster Hunter based on this demo, and then you, people are going to get the game and be like, wait a minute. <laughs> what the fuck is this? <laughs> well, I see it. 
I understand where you're coming from. And as a person who's been playing Monster Hunter since the PSP, I do understand that there's a lot of tedious activities that go with the game. Uh, you're absolutely right. You do find herbs. You do have to go find rocks and sticks and combine them to forge new weapons and all this stuff. Stuff that's really not conveyed in this demo. You know, like in Monster Hunter, you go out and you kill an animal. You can go and actually bring out a pot and a table and cook meat and prepare it and eat it and do all these really tedious activities that really weren't conveyed in the demo. The thing about that and this being a demo that I think Capcom struck the right nerve is that Monster Hunter is not a new series. It's not a new franchise. It sells well. It sells extremely well well in the East, and it sells well here in the West as well. And I think that people who played it on the 3DS, people who played it on the Wii here in America, or played it years ago on the PSP and on Sony's uh, consoles, kind of get an idea of what it's about. And if you were to have a demo of a game like Monster Hunter, and, and it was just a short demo, would you want to include those little tiny you know, fetch quests that really aren't as engaging or as exciting? Or would you want to equip people with what they need to go out and fight this ginormous animal so they can understand that at its greatness, this is at the, the most exciting points. This is what this game is. And I know that some people probably will see it and get disillusioned to think that this is all you're going to do. You're going to start the game. You're going to see 25 quests, pick one and go out there. You already have all the armor and the weapons that you need to just take it down without understanding that you start off with virtually the cheapest, weakest weapons and armor in the game. you got to go out and kill small animals to to forge armor and weapons. You basically got to... Did you just put a dick in your mouth? I did. I, did. I put a dick in my mouth. Is that, <laughs> is that cool? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Um, <laughs> I, I think I think I want to put a dick in my mouth, too. God damn it, I forgot the, my daughter's uh... watching this. Anyway, uh, audio <laughs> listeners, I'd suggest you tune into YouTube next time because you're missing out on some <laughs> fucking treats. <laughs> oh, they really are really good. But I think that they struck the, the proper chord by showing people that this game is fun at its greatness, at, at its best point. And you're going to have to work your way up to be able to do these things. But once you understand what you have to do to get to this point, that those activities will become fun as well because you understand that there are myriad options for you to uh, advance your character and, and the things you can grow into and learn to do. So I think I understand where you're coming from, but I also see the other side. And if you're making a demo, you don't really want to include all those really small, tedious activities to kind of that's turn people of the, off. So that's so I'll be honest with you, Beastly, is that that's kind of I was hoping for a little bit of the the longer gameplay stuff. I was hoping that we'd be able to forge some armor and forge some weapons based on the, the things that we killed in that demo. What I found once I answered the demo is that there's basically three monsters to kill, and uh, there was none of the hooks that drag you back to Monster Hunter, right? When I play Monster Hunter on the DS, is I'm constantly looking for that next piece, uh, or that next item that's going to help me make my my next piece of armor or my next awesome weapon, right? Because mm -hmm. that's what it's all about. It's that constant... It's that endless loop of Monster Hunter. Carrot on a stick, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's totally a carrot on a stick where you go out, you kill a monster, you bring it back to the armorer guy, and he says, okay. Takes those scales, yeah. Yeah, you got those You got those scales off that big-ass monster now, and here's what we can build with them. And maybe off killing it once, you'll be able to build a helmet or uh, you know gloves or something. But to fill out the set, you're going to have to go out kill that monster four more times, five more times. Maybe more, right? To to mm -hmm. really grind for that stuff, and then plus that you're gonna need, you know, you're gonna need diamonds, you know, because you know that's one of the ingredients. Like it's very much a grindy game. It's very grindy, yeah. But you know, for players who like that, and for players who like to kind of complete those sets, it's very addictive. That's why I was actually a little surprised when I heard Gary say that it didn't really capture him. You know, by what he had seen, this is a loot gamer's dream. There's so much loot in this game I, as far as weapons and armor. And, and the grind, the thing that you love so much is 100% in a Monster Hunter game. You're going to be grinding forever to get, you know, to I've, the level you want to be. I wish they would have conveyed that in the demo, though. Like, I've put in hundreds of hours into not just Monster Hunt, but other um, kaiju hunting, oni hunting, whatever games um, that I'll talk about in a moment. But for me... My concern um, is pretty much akin to what Briar said, is that I don't actually think it's in there. Um, this hasn't been a main staple Monster Hunter game. This is an intentional 
um, way of bringing the Monster Hunter series to a Western audience, making it more arcadey, making it more accessible. The combat in it feels almost nothing like Monster Hunter Cross uh, or Double Cross. Uh, it feels just like it Monster Hunter to me. It's, to me, it felt it's nothing like It's the same like game. It. It's not the same game. So uh, take the katana, the longsword. Uh, the longsword um, in... I guess any other Monster Hunter game or the Insect Glaze or the bow, um, the heavy bow, uh, bow cannon, all of those there are like Dark Souls in that they've got frames of animation that you cannot cancel out of and they've got intentional clunkiness to the movement. Yeah. And the monsters, um, the telegraph on their movement is is far more aggressive. Uh, it's just a much more difficult game. Even on, you know, the Diablos, the, the, the um, sort of expert mode on that, I found that the combat was, and, and again, I'm not, you know, I've not put in a lot of hours into this game. I found the combat to be ridiculously easy in comparison. Um, I feel like it's a much more arcade, in the same way that Dark Souls, you know, that Dark Souls 1, 2, and 3 got progressively easier, and they added more frames of, you know, you could cancel animations mid-roll. You can't cancel animations in this. I mean, if you if you commit to a strike, your character is going to do that strike unless they get attacked and get knocked out of their animation. If you stop to, to drink a potion, you have to put your weapon up. You have to wait for the animation of you drinking that potion. And while you're doing that, you're 100% vulnerable to any enemy in the area. It's the same way for me, at least, it that I remember. It felt like they were about half the length on most of those things. Like stopping to drink a potion, it felt like the guy just pulled it out, chugged it, moved on. Like that was probably four or five. I don't know. It might be me nitpicking, but for me, it felt like a an intentional simplification of the combat, at least so I played, I played a couple of different weapon types, right? Like you don't have classes in this game. You have weapon types and you basically yeah. like, that's your class. And I played my favorite class is the dual blades because it's fast. You can, you know, you're rolling around, you're swiping, you're swiping, you're swiping, you're doing a bunch of damage. You, you don't even have to put your weapon away to drink a potion. Like you just feel so quick and nimble and compared to like the rest of the classes, other classes, like the, like the bow or the bow and arrow or like the the long sword, it feels much more like Dark Souls where you really yes. it's super deliberate. You have to wait for your animation to be you know to be, to go through before you can dodge. You'll often like f realize that hitting that Y button was a huge mistake because <laughs> yeah. you're about to get like eaten <laughs> by this monster. That's exactly what happened to me. <laughs> yeah, like I don't know, man. Like I I literally went right right off of this game, ate some lunch and started playing Monster Hunter 4 on the DS and it was like, oh yeah, the the combat feels the same, it just looks way better on the PS4. Um, the world feels the same except you don't have the loading screens on the mm -hmm. PS4. You know, it's beautiful on the PS4. It was absolutely gorgeous. The game Listen. is um, unbelievable as far as graphics go. It's got some performance issues that I hope they mm -hmm. work through. Uh, before they release, uh, especially if you don't have a PS4 Pro, but um, it's not—it's not a representative. It, you know what? Actually, being a Destiny player, it's almost like the opposite of uh, Destiny's demo, where or, it, what I expected going into Destiny 2 was a much deeper game than what I got. But if you were to play this demo, I, my suspicion is that what you're going to go into playing <laughs> for Monster Hunter 4 is a much you know, lighter game than what you're going to actually get with Monster mm -hmm. Hunter 4 because you're not presented with the the quest system at all. You're not presented with, uh, you know, making meals for yourself. You're not presented with, uh, your you know, your Calico customization, your weapon customization, your armor customization, the way you, you can upgrade armor yeah. or you can just craft armor. Like, it's, it's an incredibly deep set of things you can do. You can fish for stuff. You can hunt stuff. You can mine stuff. Like... There's a, a ton of different things you can do. Some of them are super fun. Some of them, for me, are pretty boring. <laughs> like, some of it really yeah. feels like you're going out just looking for a specific type of mushroom that's like a 1 in 20 drop out of mushrooms. Yeah. <laughs> the old excite shrooms. See, so that's, the, uh, the, that's the kind of experience that, like, when I jumped in, I had never played one before this. I've seen a lot of videos, done a lot of research, thought I knew what the demo was going to be like and i love that walking through you have an objective you're going towards it and you see something else on your way there and you get sidetracked then you get back on track halfway there again once again you get sidetracked you see a cave you see all this exploratory stuff where you're finding all these 
crafting materials. And then once you get all those materials and stuff, like that's one of my favorite, that's one of my favorite parts about it is the uh, getting all that useless junk and finding out what it's good for. I love the the crafting system. I wish we would have been able to like make new sets of armor and not seen all the sets of weapons and armor that were available to me uh, right off the bat. Um, I was expecting a Dark Souls type combat. Um, I'm not the biggest fan of it. I kind of hate it when you can't cancel a move. I hate it when you're clunky and you go to drink a potion or something. You have to wait for that animation. In real life, I could pick my soda up, start to take a drink and stop. No problem. You know what I mean? Like, it's not. But you're going to you can't you can't continue your fight. And come back to your soda. That's photos. I could stick spin. my thumb right over the top of this, do a ninja no, no, roll, no. and be out of the way. No, you, no. Want to, you, you want me to? You want I to see? Always want yes, to know I the do. Name of it. Yes, I <laughs> absolutely <laughs> do want to see. <laughs> well, we gotta do something for next episode. Maybe next time. But, uh, <laughs> but like it, that, that should just. I don't know. It gets really annoying to me when, or if you accidentally make a mistake and hit the wrong button, then you got to sit there and wait for your guy to do whatever he's got to do. Meanwhile, you're getting clobbered by an enemy. I guess what. <laughs> What I was I was expecting something a little different. Um, I was Listen, expecting more fast paced combat. Into can I like make teams. a Can I make a suggestion before that demo ends? Try the dual blades out. Did you try the yeah, dual blades? Man. Well, that's what I was just gonna say. Um, okay. I had, was tuning into your stream, and I was right when you were using those dual blades, and I saw you just wrecking the shit out of that boss. And that's the kind of movement that I wanted. Like, I get it. It's cool. There's slow movement. There's stuff that weighs you down. I can't swing a sword three times bigger than me at the speed of light. I get it. Yeah. You know, like each, it makes each sense. weapon or each weapon loadout has its its pros and its cons. You know, those very slow weapons they're going to have so much more damage hit points. The the dual blades they do less damage, but of course it, it makes you more nimble. You can do a lot of rolling out of the way. You don't have to worry as much about drinking your potions. It all depends on your style of play, and I, I think that's a game like this. Once you learn it, I think most people would really enjoy it because you really can tailor it to your particular play style. And, and of course, games like this aren't going to suit everyone's taste, to be totally honest. Everybody doesn't like Dark Souls. Everybody doesn't like, you know, these type of uber hard experiences, Neo and the like. But I think that one thing about Monster Hunter that's going to make it better, which it has been, I guess, since the PSP, that you can play together with people. And so four people playing it, another dick goes in Briar's mouth. Uh <laughs> So (laughs) this game has four player co-op. And I think that actually kind of like destiny playing this type of game with friends, learning that the, the, uh, uh, you know, how deep the game actually is doing little activities together, going fishing, taking out huge bosses and just learning new techniques. I think that, you know, this game has what I would consider long legs because once people get into it and really figure out their particular play style, you're going to want to stay in that game and get better and get better loot and better weapons until you're at the top yeah. of the pyramid. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. I think it comes down to what the game looks like at G-Rank. Because, um, again, my judgments of it are from a demo. It could be completely off the mark. Um, Briar's concerns, obviously, again, from a demo, could be completely off the mark. It could be simplified there. The Monster Hunter games, as, as all of us know who've played them, you've got obviously the, the standard ranks, the H ranks, which is when you start not getting like all the gear given to you at the start of a hunt and you have to start preparing for a hunt. But then once you've passed the H ranks and moved into the G ranks, or when you've kind of faced the monsters with their full suite of abilities, like you've kind of learned the basics of their movements and now they've got, you know, lightning charge powers, you know, ground rippling, other things, things that I think make the game more dynamic. Um, I think the long the long life of this game will be the G-rank punishing difficulty where you need the four people and, you know, you're carting three times and, and being pushed out. Um, the stuff that I saw in the demo, I think it will be big on Twitch for a week and it will die. Um, I think if the G-rank has sustainability and difficulty and the DLC packs like they did for 4 Ultimate and Try continue to come and they keep bringing new suites of monsters, then, yeah, I think it's got a long life in it. I agree with you there. Gary. Agreed, it, agreed. It, uh, it's got to be it's got to be super difficult and it's got to be there's got to be like super gameplay hooks like that's that's what i like about the combat too is that there's depth there is like you can master you can master the dual blades and then move on to the you know the heavy or what's that kind of called it's the the lance gun yeah, yeah the big one yeah like and then it's a completely different gameplay like it's yeah. completely different Right. And like, there's a ton of depth there. I, 
if it, if it's got half the depth of a monster hunter that we we know, I think this game is going to be huge. To be honest with you, because I and think a lot that of people could... are gonna go ahead. Oh, I was just gonna say the fact you can play with friends makes me want to. Oh yeah. Want to That's... give it a better shot? So the challenging with friends too is like yeah. this game gets yeah, this hard. is tough. Well, you could also go after a specific monster and pick your um, your monster hunter's armor accordingly, like throughout your group. So you could have the one guy with the lance gun, and you know somebody else with the long sword, and Briar in there with the dual blades. And see, that's my kind of thing, man. I mean, you guys play games with me. You know that I'm not always the sit back and patient kind of guy. Uh, so I like to kind of run in there, get in there um, when I have to. When I have to think too much about what I'm doing, I tend to make mistakes. I think um, I'll also be interested to see how this works on a console because we've had them on the Wii and the Wii U and they weren't very popular. Um, the the portable variants of both Tri and 3 Ultimate were much, much more popular than their consoles. Um, and the reason being, I guess, for this is partly because of the, the, the fact that they're big in Asia and Asia is a handheld market. But that type of game where... You're like you're killing the same monster seven times, and you're farming, you know, vegetables and herbs and whatever else there. That sort of thing is the type of thing that you do on a commute, or you kick back on the sofa and you just play and you grind. So it'll be interesting to see if that translates well to sitting in front of a TV and having to, you know, spend six seven hours trying to get this gear set together. It may well do. It did for Destiny, so it might do for this. But it, I, yeah, again, I think we'll see. The console crowd especially is kind of set, set and ready for this kind of experience at this point. I think the Destiny has set the table, actually. Yep. I think a lot of the people in the Destiny community who are really hardcore on the PvE side are looking at this game and going, this feels like the next step for my fire team. Right? Yeah. It's like, I want to, I want to get into a... You know, I liked going for the loot, and I liked having challenging experiences with my fire team. No, there's not going to be raids in this game. There's not going to be, right. like, that kind of thing. But I get to play with the same guys on my PlayStation or on my Xbox or later on on the PC. Uh, I'm actually really looking forward to the PC version of this, if I'm still playing sure. it at that point. Mm -hmm. um, also, this is this is a buy for you, Briar. Oh, yeah, totally. Absolutely. Great, the only reason great. I didn't put more time into the DS versions of this game was because it was on the DS, and I, I my hands are just not suited to like a wafer thin <laughs> <laughs> controller. <laughs> like one of my biggest problems with the DS is I have to like support it with my pinkies, and yeah. on the DS, my knuckle on my pinky constantly turns that fucking thing off. Wow. Yeah, so it drives me crazy, especially in a game where you just played for 45 minutes trying oh, to man. kill this fucking monster, and then, oops, you just turned off the, the whole system, and you didn't save. Yeah, well, it sounds like uh, we're all kind of on the same page here with Monster Hunter World. I'm excited for it. I'm thinking we're going to see everybody playing this game together sometime soon. Uh, I think Mr. Diaz did uh, allude to waiting for the PC version. Am I correct? Yeah. I possibly will. I mean, I've I've played a lot of those sorts of games. Like even Dauntless, I played um, Tokaiden Two, God Eater Two. Um, they're games that I really enjoyed in that space. And for me, maybe I've got the PS4 um, upstairs, so I could go and play it. But like Brian said, I'm really looking forward to playing it at a higher frame rate. I think anything that requires timing in combat at 30 frames is not as fun. Um, gotcha. So gotcha. Might That's might wait. The, um... One of the cool things is, Gary, you have the NVIDIA Shield tablet, so you, you can yeah. do all the grindy stuff on that when you have the PC version, but the rest of us who have PS Vitas can do the same thing on a PS Vita. So if you want to do the grindy yeah. stuff, like go and get an herbs and go in to find, you know, uh, you know, whatever, you know, whatever else, like go and fish in or something like that. It's a good point. You can still do that on the couch while you're watching TV. Uh, on your PS Vita or something, but using that you know PS Connect feature. But when you're when you're into a, like a real monster hunt and you want to get your boys together to do like the big stuff, uh -huh. like you get you get on the console and you do it that way. I think that's really cool. That's a good point. I forgot. I should, I've forgotten about my Vita. That's sad. Damn, oh, man, yeah, well, what a day! <laughs> wow. What does the world it come the, to? Uh, it's it's a wow, Gary Diaz. What let let me refresh you? your mind, Gary. It's, which, it's... which one of the six Vitas did I forget? That's the question. <laughs> <laughs> so many. See, you know, BC, I'm a little surprised you didn't offer any handheld advice here. Uh, clearly, if you're having problems uh, with your handhelds giving you cramps on your fingers, uh, you just need to get a Yobo. Yeah, I mean, Simple I, as I that. experienced 
no carpal tunnel, no finger issues. It's very hard to turn it off. Or and look at the size the of his biceps from holding that thing up. <laughs> <laughs> pretty, pretty damn big. This thing right here, uh, Gary Breyer, if you have any issues with your hands, order a Yobo. It'll keep you satisfied with classic timeless games. The In next all topic. this uh, for both the Vita and for the DS, something that has helped me tremendously with uh, ergonomics are the Nerf pads like they're the nerf I, I don't what do you catch they're like they cover the nerf, whole thing nerf in nerf armor, material nerf armor. nerf armor yeah right so it's supposed to be so you could throw it in like a backpack or something mm -hmm. uh and it you know it doesn't get broken because it's covered in nerf but what i actually like it for is that it makes the thing like big and thick enough that it's like for an adult man and the hand like hands <laughs> are big enough you know we had so one of those around our wii u tablet and it was super nice oh yeah nerf is great yeah all right, so the next topic is one of mine, and I think it's a little fun, so let's get into it. You guys get into it in the, the comments. Let us know what you think. In the future, will autonomous robots replace spouses? Yeah, it's a very possible future. Do you guys think we will ever come to a point where AI will replace your partner in a relationship? What are the perceived pros and cons of a robotic spouse? I don't see any cons. You guys are going to have to tell me the cons. <laughs> yeah. I do it. Right? <laughs> just better in every way. It's a natural evolution, really. I think, yes, we will get there. I don't think I'd be able to handle it because I don't think there's anyone smart enough to code a robotic spouse that could even put up with my shit. Oh, Damn. No. What if she, what if, what if it got the wrong Lunchables? Well, you just. <laughs> A you bag just, of scrub outside the back door. You really? return that shit at Walmart, and you go get yourself another another robotic spouse that does a better job of buying Walmart uh, Lunchables. That doesn't what? that doesn't sound like that doesn't sound like a spouse. That sounds like I'm going to swap out for a butler at that point. Is what it sounds like. If you it's want all spouse, that and it's, more. See, but you've identified. If you pick this one out, this robotic yeah. spouse, this is the one you've yeah. identified with. Right. You don't just walk in, pick one we'll off. We'll call the it the Lunchables model. You gotta. <laughs> What's, you've got you got to go in. You got to check out. Each one has a personality, right? So you got to go in and see which one's a good fit for you. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, what's the criteria for literally. a spouse here? Let's be honest, because well, okay. people have married like a dog or a horse. Like, because because honestly, here we're thinking robotic spouse. Here, I could just plug a USB flashlight in, and I'm kind of halfway there. So, what makes this a for for, for me a, a robotic spouse would constitute uh, artificial intelligence. Uh, on the level of being able to hold conversations with you, uh -huh. to remind you of things. Oh God, you've got to talk to this. So as that's well. not it's a high bar. Yeah. No, no, that's I mean, not look, a high bar. <laughs> of course, of course, there have to be uh, some form of sex life. Uh, they would have to be able to do chores and manage things at least around the house and be there for you. Uh, I, I mean, as a spouse, what if you could go into a particular robotic shop and you have a picture of maybe a past loved one, <laughs> and and you say, I want this person. I want you guys to make this person, and and what? she did this, wait, wait, or he wait. did this. You yeah, could have man. anyone in the world, and you're yeah. looking for ex-girlfriend robots. God damn Beastly. it. Jesus Christ. <laughs> this is again where we go down the beastly rabbit hole. He could have any woman, any celebrity, listen, Android, man, anything. And he's like, woman, okay? Yo, you, you remember I Vanessa from like three years back? I'm out Right, Carrie, beastly? <laughs> right? You say? No, you're like, <laughs> no, nah, no, do you know what? Yeah. That girl that I dated for two weeks back then, you know, three years ago in March. <laughs> I want to show can we, can her. We, can we load her up? Let's you assume just... this. Let's take the sex part of it off the table. Let's assume that it's going to be as good or better than what every married guy is currently getting, or at least more frequent, which is almost definitely true. <laughs> <laughs> Damn right. <laughs> so let's talk about, okay, so you need to have, the amount of conversation that you want and when you want it. Mm -hmm. You've got to be able to share in household chores or lack thereof. I mean, maybe you just your your robotic spouse just takes care of all of it. Maybe you really like to mow the lawn, so you don't like to have her do that. Or him. Or it. Or it. <laughs> um <laughs> what else what other kind of criteria are we looking for here? I'm looking for emotional support. I'm an emotional human being, man. Sometimes yeah. when I have a bad day, I want to someone to just be like, you know what? 
that's DLC. Right? It's that's, like, that's yeah. DLC. That's DLC, Willie. Uh, if you want... behind DLC, what the <laughs> yeah. fuck? Look, when, when you have this robot made, <laughs> if you want to have it's that added extra, content. yeah, emotional support, <laughs> you tell, hey, look, the person who's writing the program, I, I'm the kind of guy I get emotional. If my favorite team loses in the Super Bowl, I. I I get teary eyed and I need maybe, you know, some extra Buffalo wings and a few kisses and some words of encouragement. I it's need like, that. It, it's, yeah. you know, you get interviewed, right? It, it, there'd have to be some kind of a, t- a interview process where they, it's almost like a IQ test plus a personality test where they'd, they'd kind of set up the perfect, the perfect partner for you. And then if you feel like, you know, there's something wrong, you could always have it adjusted. Yeah, uh, hey, look, Briar. I mean, honestly, I, so I have, I honestly have the perfect wife, so I wouldn't change anything. But imagine going to have this robot Jesus. made, and they could actually include courses that this thing can give you over time. So, what oh, if you want to so learn? You actually diff- learn something. What if you want to learn a different language? What if you want to learn Japanese? Yes. And this, I love this, it. this AI already knows Japanese. She what knows. If I want to learn a ten-hit combo in Tekken. Yeah. Why don't just, I just get a Japanese <laughs> wife and she can just teach get me Rosetta Japanese? Stone. But I don't need because I could have Japanese. my wife teach me. Yeah, I mean, and she can do it. She can do it over the course of two years. So you can't have sex with Rosetta I could get Stone. Get a Japanese right, wife Rosetta and over the hard, course man. of two years learn Japanese. It's not out of the ordinary to consider that you could get a woman who either speaks Japanese or is Japanese. I don't need a robot to do that. Right. Well, like, uh, but is, next month, Gary, when you want to learn, uh, let's say uh, Mandarin. <laughs> You're ready to go. You didn't have to go so, out and get a new wife to teach you Mandarin. Like, like you say, you want a portable Rosetta Stone. This is what we established. <laughs> that <laughs> fucks. How's Gary. the fucking on that Rosetta Stone, Gary? Yeah, Gary, that's going to cut the shit out of your ass. Now, it's a huge part of the look, criteria. Look, for me, I see one benefit in this that you couldn't get from just being with someone else. Yeah. And that is you get to find out. If you'd rather be gay without actually going all the way. So for me, this is my own thing here, right? Yeah. You know, again, I don't know whether or not I'd like living with a man more than I currently do with a woman. I may well do, but it's a big lifestyle change. And I've got to call up all my friends and say, yo, I suck dicks now. Like it's kind of that thing that has to be said, you know, it's a a big step to take to just suddenly bring a man into your house. Um, You know, especially after six months, if you say, you know what, Steve, like this isn't working for me. I think I'm going to go back to where I was. This I could just bring Steve Bot in, um, right. and I've got everything. Can you replace that dingus with a vagina, please? Exactly, yeah. <laughs> exactly. So I get all the um, all the vegetables with none of the uh, none of the meat. Right. So again, Throw on I some knockers me. too. I like size C. Exactly. Yeah. So you get to cuddle up with Steve <laughs> on the sofa at night. Uh-huh. You can watch the game with him together. He can, you know, cut the lawn with his shirt off and his rippling pecs. And you what if it was Steve by day? Yeah. But uh, Susie Stephanie by night, night right? Stephanie, like, so you hung out Steve, all day with Steve, and then at night you got Susie. It's just like it was like a, just a programming flip, right? So you, exactly, so you get the best of both worlds. Susie never called you during the day while you're golfing with Steve to ask you where you were, and Steve never called you while you're fucking Susie. <laughs> well, keep him as steve and again make that lifestyle choice i mean I, I don't know again I for me this, this is this is this is like a, a, a training wheels for if you definitely want to go full lifestyle the other way i mean <laughs> for me as i said it'll be a nice natural soft transition i have a serious question what the yeah. fuck does this thing do when you sleep it, it's up to you do you it want cleans to the fucking or... house wilson Listen, wilson or I want that thing it gets food. i don't want that thing Doing What's its it? thing when I'm not conscious. I accidentally I hit the fucking <laughs> box of dick song. Sing it. Sing I it, even, I don't even trust NASA. You think I'm going to trust this damn robot running around my damn house well, while I'm it, sleeping? What, what His name is Steve. It could just cuddle. He's called a robot. Yeah. He has a name. <laughs> what if she's programmed to tell you that she this. loves you like 20 times a day? Look, it's all in the programming, Wilson, and, and it all work out. Look, science has never been wrong before. Okay, mm. so just 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 imagine you could be a. No, people thought the Earth was flat once, right? We were the center of the universe. Yeah, people yeah. believe in global warming. We all know that's yeah. craziness, well, right? People still think the Earth's flat. Anyway. <laughs> your 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 individual specifically made robot can sit up and watch you if you uh-huh. want, and I, she can lay next to you and massage no, your I back. I want the big spoon. I this? I like to be the little spoon. I find it very hard to find exactly. a partner who likes to be the big spoon 
and my robot is going to be the big spoon. Completely valid. You will have Steve. a big spoon. Look, Steve will be the big spoon. <laughs> Steve steps up. Steve. Look, Wilson, she can be working at night as a telemarketer while you're asleep. Oh, hey. You, or he, Steve, probably has a better She needs another autonomous robot that she likes more, though, <laughs> at work. you got to add some restrictions, man. The Bicentennial <laughs> Man. The Bicentennial Man. <laughs> I know. So I just Steve or her wasn't Robin that Williams. her? Oh my god! No, that was Robin Williams, wasn't it? Uh, no, there was, a, there was a movie called I think Her, where everybody oh, had no. like a personal assistant, and they all the personal assistants decided they actually liked hanging out with personal assistants more than people. <laughs> it was a yeah, cool, not cool movie. Check it out. Now it's let me tough. let me ask you you guys a question. If you did have a, a, a completely robotic AI controlled spouse. And it was, this is was some some being that you talked to and it had real conversations with you and asked you about things going on in your life and talked about the future. Asked no, no, you about no. My your personal future. assistant isn't going to talk about any of that shit. She's okay, going to talk what? about the new DLC in Destiny. She's going to talk about <laughs> she's going to talk about you know sports scores. She's going to talk about... She's going to know all that shit. Like, there's not going to be... There, she's going to talk about, uh, you know, like all the stuff that I'm interested in. I'm never going to hear about this outside world of hand moisturizer <laughs> and what fucking Carly did at work today that just really pissed her off. Oh, also, See. my robot is going out and working. <laughs> she's getting a fucking job. <laughs> I mean, to me, it's yeah, a win. I just want Steve to be like an interactive Wikipedia for me because I waste hours of that's, my time. That's how you treat Alexa chat for that. Gary. <laughs> yeah. Siri. I do treat that's chat like that as well. I've just got Steve questions. Gary like, treats oh. fucking Twitch chat like his own personal fucking Amazon Alexa. <laughs> he it's just true. asks questions and waits for <laughs> answers. <laughs> I try to split them up, yeah. like ask them, like, uh, no answer questions, you know what I mean? Uh, gives them little riddles. Well, that's what I want. Like, I just want Steve. If I say to Steve, Steve, I've just seen, um, you know, we're talking Robin Williams. Robin Williams on the TV, you know, obviously not anymore. Um, what was his latest film that he was in? And then Steve will tell me that. And I'll be like, what other actors are in that film? And then they'll tell me that. Go, can you show me what they look like in 2017? How much weight have they lost? And just shit like that all day long. Yeah. I just want Talk Steve to be Fox. there. You, it's Talk so about Sanford and Sons and Red Fox and how Red Fox, the actor who played Sanford, his actual name was Sanford. Red Fox was his stage mm -hmm. name. It was fascinating. Exactly. That's a, the Steve, you know. do you remember the, um, the 1990s band Silk? Could you please explain to me why there were Big G and Little G and how those names came about? And Steve would be able to tell me that. And Steve would be able to say, also related searches include. And then he'd tell me all those things. And I'd be like, Steve, man, you know everything. You're so smart. Right. You're and, great. Uh, you now take your clothes off. It's time to fuck. That's <laughs> <laughs> the next question. That's the next question. I'm I know this is a great habit. To it. The next question was: Would you guys, you, you, you're, you're intimate oh, with this? I'm not done you, with Steve yet. Be sleep. Why you gotta? Why you gotta just push Steve aside? Trust me, Brian. I don't think Steve is going anywhere. Okay. There Steve is is still my mind, to be honest. Steve when I'm all Eagle. alone in my bunk tonight, that's who I'm thinking of. Would you guys choose, if possible, to be intimate with your own sentient being? Yes. I don't even think I could sit in the same fucking room as one of these things, man. They're spying on me. I talk so much conspiracy bullshit, dude. What if what if they were hackable? What's it? Just turn off the Wi-Fi. You're good to go. Yeah, I mean, look, check it out. Right? Look, my Wi-Fi? Are you Steve. kidding me? Get rid of the refrigerator. Or just just throw your car away, or like you can still you can still collect connect a cable. No, yeah, it's not no gonna. Wi -Fi. I don't know. Steve if we're doing autonomous robots man. that can think, I don't. Steve's think, only I mean, got one plug, and it's. <laughs> there's there's no there's no cat six on steve you're safe <laughs> i think wi-fi is off the table if we're talking robots that uh, artificial intelligence I, I i think what if someone hacks in they want to listen to me what if i want to talk conspiracy theory with my autonomous significant other yeah. I mean, you're, you're right who's listen. more suited Honestly. to talk to you about this where are you going to learn more than from fucking steve steve is born of the singularity Steve just, is the singularity. He's, he's going to know everything. He's going to know about the, all the crazy YouTube he's videos. He's going to know about watched. loose change. He's going to know about the Walmart tunnels. He's going to know all that shit. All of it. I think Steve is the, the, the model we're all going to end up buying. 
What is Steve. acronym? Should that be the acronym for the robot, Steve? <laughs> what would no, those just, letters stand for? They, they only have generic white man names. They're called like Steve, Jim, Bob, Dave, Phil, Tim. Trevor. That's I, it, Tim. I have a generic white man name. My name's Brett. It don't get worse than that. There you go. You can be one of the uh, robots. Yeah, but you gangster. Are well. you mad about yeah. it, Beasley? I, no, I think it's actually pretty damn gangster. Yeah. So you would. Yeah, you wouldn't... I was named after. Um, God damn it! Some old TV show my dad used to watch. He didn't think about the repercussions though. So I passed on the name of my it son. Was it like, WWF? Brett the Barber. Brett the Barber. Or Bret Hart. Bret no, Hart. No, Bret, Bret Hart was. I was a kid when he was out. This is the thing. If you're going to name your kid something, think about the child. Because if you don't think about that child, then they won't think about theirs. And that's why I have a junior now. Fuck you too, dad. Um, but <laughs> I, I, I feel like I would have gone the, the Sue route. I've always respected that by naming a child Sue, you've prepared that child for the hardships of life in a way that something like a Brett, a Briar, a Willie, or a, or a Gary just can't do. Well, I mean, if you name me Sue, girl, you better expect to see me pedestrian. in court because your ass is going to get sued. Real talk. Um, but it could go wrong, Wilson. And, and you know what? We live in a technologically advanced world where we see technology turn on on mankind often. What if you're maybe having dinner and your particular sentient being has made you just this fantastic lasagna? You're sitting there. Mm. She goes, she or he, Steve, sits on the other side of the table and sits down across mm. from you and pretends to eat or does whatever they do at that period of time. And then you hear the voice of maybe some government officials or people at NASA or NSA talking through the speaker of your robot and you realize that you are under surveillance. What do you do then? You don't take it in the room and say, hey, I got to talk to you. Call Alex I, Jones. That's I, what I, I do. If anyone's going to kill me, I, I Fucking Alex Jones Steve. can't help you. He's taking up the ass from Steve every night. <laughs> <laughs> he's in on it. Steve's turning the frogs gay. That's he's, doing. Got, That's... he's got three Steves. <laughs> <laughs> does I mean, but look, it, it can also go in a really good direction. You can have an, a harem. You can have five or six female robots or male robots if you're Gary, and they can all be with you. And every time you go to Walmart, they, they're driving another car, and they all get out and two of them put their hands in your back pocket, and the rest of them put their hands in their back pockets, and you're walking around Walmart like a circle. Yeah, How I mean, like that? a human centipede. Yeah. Let me let me sell Steve That's to you, enough. right? Everything we've spoken about, Steve is and delivers. But he has the body and frame of James Franco. <laughs> We've now sold Steve. I would have. You're bringing me I... back. He's bringing back Franco. You're, yes. No, you're bringing me back with the James DeFranco model. I, I gotta say, I really hope that Steve gets uh, made and released soon because I'm pretty sure that once my wife listens to this conversation, I'll be looking yep, for a yep. new spouse. <laughs> I'll be on the hunt. <laughs> Only option. Steve will be looking real good. Yeah. Steve is. Elon Musk, get on it. Right? Right? I... Fuck, fuck those fucking super tunnels. <laughs> let's, let's get on That's it. We don't tunnels. need electric cars. cars. We need, like, gay training wheels. That's what we need. Steve is the one. <laughs> You're right. You're right. These cars that go from zero to 60 in two seconds, you're better than that. You're better, you're better than that. Steve's better than that. Steve's worth it. He put stuff in space, you're better than that. We need stuff here now. We need, <laughs> we Steve. need stuff put in we me. Need Steve. Steve. <laughs> they actually make the first robots right. called Steve like 30 years from now or whatever. We're going to lose our fucking shit. Yeah. <laughs> Hugo, Hugo in the chat has got a perfect one there. I think yeah. Steve stands for Sentient Technically Evolved Virtual Emissary. I think that's perfect. Mm. That's Damn. Awesome. He's nailed it. It, it, it sounds, now it makes sounds sense. technical. Yet nondescript enough to be a uh, 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 I, I, Apple product, you know? Like, Steve, coming soon to an Apple store near you. And you walk into the you know the Apple store and you talk to an Apple genius and you realize that's actually Steve. You just take him home. You just put him under your arm and just walk out with Steve. Uh, you know, Steve, hop in the car. Let's go. Forget all the programming. Forget all the, you know, wonderful works of science that it would take to do this. The hard part's over. We named it for you. So get on it, Musk. Right. All right. Damn. Musk. I mean, Steve. to be fair, the more we think about this, I could just pretty much find Steve in a gay bar right now. It doesn't need to be a robot. I think we've just made a lifestyle choice. You, you probably could find Steve in a lot of gay bars right now, Gary. A lot. <laughs> See you later, guys. I'm off. <laughs> <laughs> It's, it's, it's half past 12 on a Sunday. That's pretty much the uh, the peak time for me. So I, I'm... <laughs> it sure is. Done.
I'm down. Oh, what's the All next right, topic? So, that was a good one, though. That was great, Beasley. <laughs> That's what I'm here for, guys. All right, so the next topic is one that maybe one or two of our hosts can only put input on, but I'm anxious to hear it because this is a series that over the years I've really grown away from. But, but from what I'm hearing, it's really exciting, and I guess it's been reborn. Assassin's Creed Origins is pretty great. This is Briar Rabbit's topic, and I'd love to hear your thoughts on it, Briar. Yeah. All right. So I've been looking forward to this game. I've talked about it a couple of times on this show. Is that I've been really looking forward to this game. Is this game was not on my radar for the last three years. I think it's been three years since they've made the last Assassin's Creed game, and I've liked Assassin's Creed in the past. The first game I really liked. You know, it had some issues, but it was a really cool concept, and I really enjoyed kind of navigating a world as an assassin and be able to climb up buildings and all this stuff that the original Assassin's Creed provided. Assassin's Creed Two really went much further, gave me a great story, great great characters, and just really amped it up. But over time, that formula, it just wore thin. They didn't, they didn't evolve it enough. They didn't improve it enough. The Animus stuff especially got really worn out to me. Convoluted. So over the over time, I just, you know, I fell off the Assassin's Creed store, the Assassin's Creed series altogether. And, uh, Origins was not on my radar at all. And I saw I saw pictures of it. I saw talk of it. Um, you know, it's, Egypt seemed like a really cool place to explore. You know, surprisingly, very few video games have done that. Gone to the, you know Egypt as a you know like a location to explore. But like I started hearing things that like, hey, this game is actually a lot like The Witcher Three. Hmm. Huh? And The Witcher 3 is actually one of my favorite games of all time at this point. I've put probably about, I would say, 200 to 300 hours into The Witcher 3 at, um, around there. And what I really like about The Witcher 3 is that I can jump into that game for 10 minutes or I can jump into it for six hours and feel the same way about it. Really? I, I feel... I feel like I can do like a side quest and be like totally absorbed into a side quest, or I can just go out and like look for herbs and you know qu- crafting materials or whatever. Um, the The combat is fun. So anyway, that, that's Witcher Three. Assassin's Creed gives me a lot of what I like about Witcher Witcher Three. Is it gives me a cool place to explore, interesting quests, interesting lore, fun side quests. But also, it's got the Assassin's Creed stuff with the you know the the knife blade thing, and you're going out and assassinating dudes. But this open world is a much more interesting place to do this Assassin's Creed stuff because you can go anywhere. You can you can ride horses, you can ride camels. You've got like a Destiny like loot system that is super fun. You can be looking for you know this game. This game really. It rewards you for exploring in a way that Zelda Breath of the Wild does, where you go out and you see like a pyramid. And if you go and explore that pyramid, you're going to get rewarded for it. If you go out and you see a mountain and there's a cave in there, you go explore that cave. You're going to get rewarded for it. Um, it, It's really fun in that way. It, it's hard to explain why I like the game so much because there's just so much to it. Like if you go out and on a quest where a woman wants to find her husband, you might find out that the husband is actually like drunk on an Island somewhere surrounded by alligators. So he can't come back. You kill (laughs) all the alligators, you throw them on your boat, you bring them back to his wife. But the guy's like, wait a minute, that's not my fucking wife. That was a shotgun marriage. Her and her brothers are trying to steal all my money, right? There's, like, a bunch of stuff like that. It's not quite to the Witcher level where you have to... In The Witcher, I feel like... Me and Gary talked about this earlier. In The Witcher, me and Gary... In The Witcher, you would have decided, okay, do I believe her or do I believe him? And you would have made a decision about that. In, In Assassin's Creed, the game tells you the outcome of that story more, but it's still an interesting story, and it's a better side quest than... Go out and find nine mushrooms. 
Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It's been a lot of mushrooms on today's episode. Yeah. That yeah. sounds pretty exciting. Wow. It's fun. And getting the loot, like being able to like do all sorts of shit in the world. Like if you if you go into a lake and you dive to the bottom of that lake, guaranteed there's a bunch of fucking loot down there. Guaranteed. Really? It. Yeah. If you you know, if you run into a boss, like you're gonna get loot off that boss. So it's it's constantly rewarding. But also the stories it tells are constantly fun to listen to. And the world you're exploring is ancient Egypt, which is just, you know, alone is very interesting. It's a it's a cool ass game. Wow. Well, I um, found that I've put probably a similar amount of hours as yourself um, into it. But I think we're at a similar point. I told you that I'm in a bath towel and that made sense to you. So I assume we're, yes. we're pretty similar. Um, that's not a spoiler to anyone. I'm just going to describe it as I'm in a bath towel. Um, but yeah, for me, I, I feel like it's about as good as I've ever seen an Assassin's Creed game be. Um, doesn't mean to say it is the best I've seen a game be. I I don't think it does Witcher 3 better than Witcher 3. No. I don't think it does Zelda better than Zelda. Um, but I feel like it takes 2017 um, beats from those games and what makes those games good and understanding what a consumer would demand from an open world RPG in 2017 and does that perfectly. So little quality of life features, you know, like the camel, the fast travel, the um, using Senu, you know, the, the bird to spot enemies and mark maps, the, um, the questification of the game, the fact that you can strip it down into bite size. I'm going to go into this camp and I'm going to do this activity and then this is complete and I'll get an XP reward and some loot. The fact that there's dailies in it, weeklies, um, lots of different things like that that you haven't seen before. I mean, I think it's a better RPG, and it, it won't be recognised now, obviously, because of the timing of it, but I think it's much, much better at doing open-world RPG than Horizon Zero Dawn. Um, and, you know, I think that's probably the closest direct comparable, which is like a AAA story-driven single-player RPG. Um, and that's where I would compare it to. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say it's as good as... Um, genre leaders that we mentioned but i think something like horizon it can it can easily go toe to toe with and i'd argue it's the better game from what i've seen with people playing it i think that's actually a pretty good comparison um with horizon um i just had a quick question or two about it Briar, you had mentioned um a weapon rarity system uh similar to destiny so is that the common uncommon rare legendary exotic kind of tier yeah essentially it's it's got all of that stuff it's under different names but like if you get a if you see a purple you're excited to see a purple yeah and you know based on the kind of weapons similar to monster hunter based on the kind of weapons that you like to use you're going to be more excited you know for instance there's uh you know a huge kind of like almost hammerish weapon. It's got like a big stone on the top of like a huge stick that's like 8 feet long and they call it a heavy blunt because it's heavy and it's, you know, a blunt object. And, you know, I imagine that you, Wilson, would really enjoy using uh, that type of weapon. It's not the kind of heavy blunt I had in mind. So well. <laughs> I mean, it's really... reaction when you said heavy blunt. <laughs> it is really interesting, though, talking about that. And that's something that I didn't mention, is that other Assassin's Creed have had almost like the Batman Arkham series combat. Right. which is just auto lock in hit hit block okay. dodge hit block dodge this feels almost closer to i want to say dark souls in that the weapon that you put on influences the style of combat very and much so. it is very dark souls in the the parry riposte um dodge kind of um combat system to it and, and like you mentioned that there's different rarities of weapons actually the fact that you've got um builds very much similar to destiny and that you can spec out for range combat assassination or melee the exotic weapons all have exotic perks, which I don't know if you've noticed yet or got into. Like, there's a sickle that you can get that poisons enemies um, when you hit them, and then when their bodies go down, they leave noxious gas that, when other enemies walk up, will choke them and and make them you know um, lose like sight. So you, you can build like a, a real trapper kind of assassin, uh, focus on laying traps and poison, and then use exotics that strengthen that. Perks on the weapons, yeah, um, not on the armor. The armor's purely cosmetic, but. The um the weapons yeah it, it, to me it is the best way to do an Assassin's Creed game. You're not going to get anything revolutionary outside of that, but if you love the lore of Assassin's Creed and you love open world RPGs, 
it's a great example of it. I can't, I can't really fault it in that way. Yeah. For me, this sounds like the perfect opportunity to get back into it. I haven't played oh, yeah. Assassin's Creed in years, to be totally honest. Even the one that people lauded is great, Black Flag. I, I shied away from that as well because yeah, they're re- by- re-releasing Black Flag. Huh? They're redoing remastering Black Flag. It's well, free was- um, on UPlay tomorrow. Oh, no. So that's that's the news. It's free tomorrow. Wow. Ah. <laughs> um, but. I even stayed away from that one because I'd felt so burnt out with Assassin's Creed, the yeah. annual release, the convoluted story, everything just seemed like it was rushed. And they took, I think, three years to release this one. This was in development for a long time. Yeah. It sounds like it paid off. And we can't really say that they necessarily stole these tropes from other existing games that were released in, in 2017 because if they've been working on it for three years, uh, I would surmise that probably a good deal of this uh, evolution was already in place but yeah uh, I've seen images of the game I-, I told you guys before usually if I don't have a game I won't watch videos of it because I don't want to keep myself excited and yeah. you know I like I'm, I'm an impulse buyer I'll see something look good and I'll just buy it immediately and I might not like it later on but um this definitely sounds like a good opportunity it's for me cool, to get back man. into it man. um it's it's a really fun game I I I was looking f- I was not looking forward to the game until I started hearing comparisons to The Witcher 3. And while I agree with Gary, it doesn't out Witcher 3 The Witcher 3. Mm-hmm. It takes it definitely takes some notes from the sensibilities that of that style, game. style, yeah. Yeah, and cool. if you like that game, you know, you probably like this. But also the combat is really fun like that. The heavy blood I was joking so about that before. But like using <laughs> that that weapon is actually super fun because it's like this just brutal like you sm- Mash somebody and they just like drop to the floor like in a mass, and then your follow up attack just nails them right in the fucking nuts with this like you know eight inch round piece of fucking stone at the end of a stick. It's <laughs> it's just absolutely brutal. It just makes you laugh and grin every time. It's a really cool game. It so sounds are very there, different like, unique, from unique rewards. Like could a certain boss drop have a better chance of dropping a particular weapon? Do you guys know or I don't know. I know that the <clears throat> DLC has like gods that are coming to the game, and you're gonna go out and be able to kill the gods. So it may be Whoa. that the gods do that, or maybe the end level stuff that I haven't gotten to does that. But I, I don't actually know to kind of selling me on this, to be honest. To be uh, me cool too. Game. Yeah, I mean, it's it's if you are looking for a game to lose some hours in, and maybe you can only choose one game for Christmas. Um, or a limited selection, this game will probably give you between 70 to 100 hours of gameplay to get through. If you're not rushing it, I've heard people saying 120 to 150, so you're definitely going to get your money's worth. Um, I can't comment on whether the story is compelling. It seems engaging enough at the moment, but certainly the gameplay, the moment-to-moment gameplay, definitely delivers the fantasy of being an ancient Egyptian assassin. So, and yeah. It's funny because this game actually kind of impacted other games that are being developed at Ubisoft. Uh, based on the success of this game, uh, Ubisoft decided that putting a little more time into games actually seems to have some serious benefits to their bottom line. Mm-hmm. So they're, they pulled back a, a few other games like Far Cry 5 and said, okay, we're going to push back the release date on that, give the developers more time to really flesh out some systems and make a cooler game. You know, Ubisoft has been doing a lot of cool stuff lately. We were talking earlier while we were playing um, uh, PUBG about uh, Sweep the Legs has been playing um, Rainbow Siege uh, oh, Rainbow online. Six Siege. Yeah, Rainbow Six Siege. And that's one of those games that Ubisoft released but continued to work on and work on and work on and now has a huge fan base. The Division is another game that I feel like falls into that is that that game released and for me completely flopped, but they just came out with a 1.8 update nearly three years after release. And people are super excited about what the content is in that release and the gameplay systems that have changed. And they added a PVP mode nearly three years after release to that game. You know, Ubisoft has got some things going on over there. There's they're they're to be watched right now. Yeah, it, it sounds like they're taking more time and, and more deliberate effort in their development process. It's easy to just, you know, push one out every year and get a quick paycheck, but you're going to get much more sustained growth if you. I push take one time. out every day and that'll pay me shit. I think I think the shit is the payment, bro. Talking um, <laughs> Division One Point Eight. That's that's a pretty good transition for our final topic. Um, I think because that was one of the headline games that I wanted a table with the crowd. 
Um, we've spoken about Death, Destiny 2 at the start of the show, and I know a lot of the responses in chat probably would, would get a lot of value out of this topic, so I think it's one that maybe we want to skim through and get some thoughts as we go. Um, there's a lot of uh, notes in our document, uh, so don't be worried, guys. This is more just for general discussion, so it's not going to be a long one. It's more of uh, something that we hope to bounce around, and that's Destiny 2 Methadone. Um, we're all recovering Destiny 2 addicts, um, or Destiny addicts, I should say. And D2 I don't have a problem, not... Gary. It's not a problem. <laughs> I can quit whenever I want. (laughs) It's not the drug that we all had that kept us back playing eight hours a day. And I think that's not a bad thing. We're not going to get into discussing whether that's good or bad. But what it does do is give us a lot of time to devote to other games of service and grindy kind of games that you can come back to week on week. So I've got two or three games now that I play weekly destiny 2 is one of them and i've got other games in there as well as the story-based games like assassin's creed that i play through so i just wanted to kind of bring on some different platforms and have a talk with you guys as a host talk about some of the games that i play games of service and come back to regularly and maybe get some ideas from you and see if chat's got some ideas too about things that they're playing in addition to destiny and have found themselves revisiting time and time again um first one's here division 1.8 you mentioned it there This is a fantastic time to come back. Even if you've not got any of the DLCs, you've just had Division, you had Division sitting on the side on your shelf, and it's something that you've just not visited. You've got access to 1.8. It's been given to everyone who's ever bought the game. You don't have to have the Gold Edition or the DLCs to get it. Um, You won't get access to Underground, Last Stand, or Survivor, but what you will get is some really, really great quality of life features that really make the game fun to play as a single player, some quality loot um, to chase, some sets that really influence the way the game's played, and an endless horde mode, which is similar to COD Zombies, and it has absolutely no scale uh, ceiling on the scaling. So this will keep going until you fail, and it's scaled to single player or small group co-op. So has any of you guys played The Division, or have you got anything in that sort of PS4, Xbox One, PC space that you keep coming back to as a service game? I own The Division... Uh, and I'm looking forward to checking out 1.8. I'll probably check it out this week at some point because I'm really looking forward to it. That game was a huge disappointment at launch, but every time they've added an update to it, they pull me back. They pull me back a little bit more. And this time, I swear to God, they've taken care of one of my biggest complaints in that they added a PvP mode, and that seems like it'd be really fun because when we played the beta of that game going back so long ago, Dark Zone. The Dark Zone was so much fun. But what the Dark Zone was in that beta and what it ended up being in the actual game was so different. I'm hoping that the PvP version or the version of PvP that they bring into 1.8 is going to kind of give me that thrill again. Yeah, I I actually played it at the same time as you, Briar, and I had a lot of fun with it too. And I see some of the other games you got on the list, but as a quick mention, I wanted to just say this. There's a game that's kind of been an ongoing joke on this show, and especially on our last show, uh, the Beastly Thoughts show, of a game that I loved but I never played. I wanted to announce that I'm actively playing Final Fantasy XV. And that's one of the games I've kind of drift... Oh, shit. Uh, (laughs) Briar doesn't want to hear that. (laughs) Uh, I've, I've... Went over there because Destiny kind of slowed down for me and I wanted to get into something that I felt like I could get passionate about. Uh, I heard Wilson a couple of weeks ago telling me that it had one of the greatest stories. He said he actually cried during the game. And so uh, I've been playing that game. I'm probably about seven or eight hours in and I've been loving it. To be Um, fair, Wilson also cries during Coke commercials. So I'm a big bitch. What can I say? (laughs) (laughs) The one when the polar bear gets them every time. I'm so (laughs) emotional, man. I told you when we were talking about the robots, I need emotional support, man. (laughs) Um, For me, um, Overwatch is a game that I come back to um, daily uh, for my PvP fix. Um, But some other games, um, I'm looking at my Steam list here. Uh, Warframe just had a huge update, actually. Um, isn't it more... <sighs> the Plains of Adalon? Thank you very much. Yeah, and it's... There's a lot of stuff to do there. Um, a lot of people in uh, Tefty's chat will come in when he's playing Destiny, and I'll read their interactions with some of the stuff that they've been doing in the game. And it's... Although I haven't dove in yet, I'm planning on diving back into that. 
when I don't know, probably when I get done um, exploring some of the mods in GTA Five, Gary had put on the list here. Um, I'm actually applied for a few role play servers because um, they don't just let anyone in um, to those role play servers. There's a few uh, questionnaires and uh, you can put me down as a reference. And- Absolutely. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> be like, wait, didn't that the guy that killed uh, Biznat for that uh, scope in PUBG? We don't know. We can't. Right. Never can't forget Biznat 12. Never forget him. Why do you guys got to bring up old shit? Man, just <laughs> never forget, man. That never guy's a legend. Uh, like you know I what? said, uh, of a fuck part- Biznat 12. That's what I got to say. Oh. Fuck Biznat 12, that <laughs> scope hoarded motherfucker. That dude had eight scopes on him when he died. And he wasn't sure. I didn't even have a red dot. We were going into combat with friends and family. And he wasn't sharing any of those scopes. He had eight Fuck scopes, bro. He deserved to die. It's funny you bring him up because we just got a, uh, a uh, iTunes review from Biznat that said, I only had four scopes, you greedy bitch. <laughs> Eat a bag of dicks. Revolver live promo code. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, buddy. Uh, what's think- got me most excited more than anything, though, I would say right now, is we got to jump into that new PUBG map. And mm-hmm. like Briar said, it felt like a complete... They've added new weapons. <clears throat> Obviously, it's a new map. Um, we were discussing the size of it. It's relatively the same scope and size as the old one. The terrain's completely different. The way the buildings are made are completely different. You don't have problems shooting out windows because they're all barred up because apparently... All of Russia is the hood, and you got to have Spend bars over your hour. windows. Russia is vaulting hood. through windows today. Our whole oh, team yeah, is like, the, the crash, crash, vaulting over <laughs> stuff. You know, your friends like, oh, I got a guy on me, I got a guy on me, and you hear gunshots, and you see three big ass walls between you and your friend, and you're like, I have to run all the way around this fucking city, and hope that my friend doesn't die by the time I get there. Well, you can now vault over him. We like, like Briar said, we were having fun jumping in and out of all the windows in this town, making as much noise as we could. <laughs> Um, new oh, vehicles. Man, I, gotta, I gotta try that. New physics. Like, there's new physics to the game. All this, It's just a fantastic, awesome... I don't know what it is about that game, but it's not grindy, because it's not the loot. Like, yeah, yeah, it'd be awesome to open up a package like Gary and make 40 bucks, you know what I mean? Or sell your Twitch Prime loot, but... It's just fun. The game... It's not the loot fun. that you come back for. There is a secret blend of herbs and spices in there that just secret keeps sauce. people... Mm. It's It's fantastic, and... I want more of it, man. I hope that they can they can maybe expand their studio a little bit and maybe try to put out one or two maps a year. I know that's pretty advantageous. Pretty, it's a lot to ask, but that's a they're that's killing a it. Good one, man. Because like having a game like that where you can just go into and you got a bunch of friends that play it. They don't play it every day, but like you can just. We jumped in with Sweet Gary and Wilson this afternoon, kind of on a whim, and we we. We spent the whole time just... I hadn't played in months. I haven't played since Destiny 2 came out. And it just... It was fun to get back in that game. That game is just fun. Yeah, man. It's a good time. Uh, you're laughing. You're like, we were, we were all cruising around in different vehicles, running into each other. You tried to run like Gary over. Do. <laughs> you, you tried to run Gary over, and you ended up smashing into a brick wall and losing half your health. And then ah. he had to come back and pick you up because you fucked his car up. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I, I, got, I got a question for you guys. <laughs> Have you guys noticed the graphic female character designs uh, on the test servers for PUBG? The way that the females have looked. What about them? That, well, uh, Blue Hole's been getting criticized because, obvi- well, apparently they've made their female characters too realistic. They, well, they look pretty nice to me, but they have camel toes and things of this nature. So the guys can run around in their underwear. You can see the little camel in the front when the girls play. I mean, I it's a real camel. camel. I see Briar's bulge in my face all the time when we're in the car, and I'm definitely not complaining about that. So I'm not going mean, to complain I, about when the roles reverse. I didn't see the camel tie on the ladies, but I'm pretty confident, almost 99% sure, that they've just stolen Idris Elba's likeness without <laughs> yeah, man, that dude looks informing exactly him in like any him. way. They've I added made it a Ikora Ray. I, I was looking at the, there's a bl- black female. And I was like, damn, that looks like a core ray. I'm gonna make a core ray in PUBG. And Wilson's like, hey, that looks like my core ray. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they've added a new dark skinned gentleman, and if it's not Idris Elba, it's it's some yeah. sort of, you know, genetic clone of him um in there, which is pretty cool. Um there's one other game that I want to talk about, and yeah. I talk about it frequently. 
But it's worth talking about again because people that want to get into something that's grindy and don't want to play Destiny right now because there's nothing to do. World of Warcraft, you've got to try it. It's added a new leveling system which makes it feel and play like a single player RPG. Um, it's just gone in, so you can try it in the, um, the, the, the trial, which gets you up to level 20 with no cost whatsoever. Um, you can level right the way up from 1 to 110. Um, obviously you've got to buy the, the expansions, but you can do all that solo now with a nice narrative and you can kind of choose the zones that pique your interest and explore a complete open world. And every time you level, each character is going to feel completely different because they're different classes, different heroes. Everything in the game can be done without needing to communicate with anyone else. So you can now do looking for group raids. You can do looking for group heroics. You can do your dailies, weekly. So don't feel like you need to commit to it as a lifestyle game. But the good thing about World of Warcraft is if it gets its hooks in and bites you, you can build communities, join guilds, do the harder raids, do the other content. But they've made it so accessible that if you're the type of person that, you know, has a five-year-old laptop you could play world of warcraft on it you don't need a top-end pc you know it really is accessible in anything if you like to grind they've made it super super casual and super super easy for someone to get into solo so never been a better time than to try it and i hope that we can get I together wanna, as yeah i want to try central. that as a team like I, w- I would love to do that we need really to play like something that. together period i, I, I love gotta... you guys i miss you guys i know my pc isn't as super powered as some of the other hosts but you know it can handle mid mid level graphics for sure. And, for me, and... uh, for me, the the games that I play like when I'm not playing Destiny have really become games that I can just chill out for a long periods of time and like forget about the world. Right? I don't have to think about bills that need to be paid. I don't have to think about any of it. I love Witcher Three was like a turnaround in my life for this. I was deep into Destiny. I loved Destiny. I got a new PC. I wanted to check out some new PC games on my new PC. And I do- ended up downloading The Witcher 3, which is a game that came out in 2015. I didn't even download it till uh, was it the beginning of 2016? I think it was the beginning of 2016. I think so, too. I-, I have put in so many hours into that game. And sometimes I'll log in and I'll just say, you know what? I'm just going to do one side quest just for, f- for shits and giggles, um, just to waste some time. And end up looking at the looking at the clock and it's it's been six hours um it's just a totally addictive game that's why i'm so happy that assassin's creed is really while it's not as good as the witcher 3 it's really filled filled that void for me because having you know i've told this story before is i have been resisting finishing the witcher 3's last dlc because i didn't want it to be over for me and now I feel like I can do it. I can finally finish The Witcher 3's <laughs> last DLC and He's move ready. on, you know? Like, right, I'm ready to, like, end that relationship. But I, I didn't want to do it. I didn't. I just kept running. I was going back into, like, way old side quests that I'd missed, you know, forever ago. I just didn't want to finish the story. Um, but also, I love having a good multiplayer game. I love having that in my life. And I do like D- uh, Destiny 2's multiplayer. Like, I have fun when I go in there. I like using the minuet i like using a submachine gun and just stirring shit up it's what makes me a completely bad teammate in trials wilson's always got to be like you're all alone out there briar come back to us briar (laughs) Uh, really that's it's you're all alone out there killing everything briar save a little for me (laughs) is what i'm really getting at but like i i just i love to i love to have a you know just a casual fucking you know it used to be call of duty for me it's been uh, a do- it used to be Halo for me. It's been a dozen games in the past, but I love having a game that I can just jump into uh, PvP and just shoot shit, you know? And I turn off chat. I don't want to hear chat. I just want to zone out. Maybe I'll be listening to a podcast. Maybe I'll have Netflix on another screen next to me. Uh, but I just like shooting shit sometimes. Hell yeah, man. Well said. Awesome. I mean, I just wanted to talk about some other games. So the whole point of that topic was to say to people, look, if you're irritated that decisions made in Destiny 2 aren't resonating with you, um, or there's not enough to do, or you want Bungie to put more things in, just play it enough that you're satisfied with it. If that means you don't play it for a month, then you put it down for a month. If you get the itch to play it, play it again. But there's lots of other things out there that keep you know, that have these weekly resets, have these milestones and have that sort of um, cyclical 
uh, loop of gameplay that will keep you coming back. And we've spoken about a few of them here. There's tons more, you know, just listing off titles. You've got things on the mobile, things like the Pokemon series, Stardew Valley, all the mobile series, things you could you could try something new like Pokemon Go, the new Animal Crossing, Fire Emblem Heroes, things that you just haven't tried before see what i sticks, never played you know? um i never played diablo 3 and i've always heard that was an awesome yeah, game. game it's is, really good it's come a long way that um, game is stupendous PC, and it's really good on the playstation it's my preferred platform to play it because you move your character with a Gary's control still stick. Here. Gary's still here <laughs> you move your you move your character with a control stick like one-to-one -one movement as opposed to clicking the spot where you want him to walk oh to. wow okay. and it, it feels it feels much more like an action game than on PC. It, it's really a fun experience. Gary There's positives and folded. negatives to that. No, this, this, owner just I, went away. Do you know what? I agree with you completely that the controller is a fantastic way to play Diablo 3, but what frustrates me is that you get positives and negatives with that in that you get the better control system or the more fun and casual control system, but you lose the PC exclusive season content, which I think is the biggest fun in it. Like Diablo, they'll bring out seasons similar to Overwatch where they say, here's 10 new super rare um, armor sets for each class and these are only out for this season and you might play a character that starts at level one the with seasons no loot. aren't available on the console not as far as i'm aware no no shit i might be incorrect but you know I as far as i'm under the same impression that they were pc only but i could be wrong about that you bad. get patches your um, computer could run Diablo D3, no problem. Basically. It's to do with, um, without getting technical, and it's to do with duping. Um, on Diablo on console, you can turn off your game mid-save and still have the item that you've sold or cloned or disabled. PC, everything's synced to a server on Battle.net, so when your character's wiped clean for the start of a season, it's wiped clean, and you start fresh, and then you've got two months to collect all this gear and do everything else. And at the end of that season, they say, do you want to delete this character or park it in your normal characters? And then you can start like a season seven hero and, you know, keep doing that grind and trying to be like, you know, the person who's completed the highest level rift, like you doing level 70 rifts in season seven and no one else is doing it. You know, it's got that competitive edge to keep grinding, Too which is a shame. They want to add the controller support to the PC version. It's a, a I guess, a, what's it called? Like an ideological difference. Um, I don't know why they're being very stubborn about Seasons it. Seasons are but... on PlayStation and Xbox, Gary. I are love they? you. Okay, I'm sure. incorrect then. Uh, I, again, <laughs> I've, I was told that they weren't due to duping, but maybe they've come to them now. Some elitist told you that. I'll drop a link in our description. <laughs> I stand corrected. If they are, then I would recommend that you play it on console then because I too genuinely prefer the uh, the controller support. Yeah, man, there's a lot of good ones out there. Um Guild Wars 2, Black Desert Online. I mean, there's if you're looking for the competitive itch, we had mentioned Overwatch, PUBG, Rainbow Six Siege, Counter Strike. Um, I mean, Dota 2. I mean, there's there's tons of stuff out there right now that can scratch that itch during these Destiny lulls, so to speak. What about, League of, Le what about League of Legends? <laughs> League of Legends, I never got into it, man. Me you know, either, Beasley, but... your your wife's in chat with hashtag Gary was wrong. <laughs> she just roasted me. New hashtag on Twitter, Gary was wrong. Let's get it popping. I'll accept it. I will accept it. <laughs> That's amazing. Oh, yeah. No, okay, right. They were added on March this, this year, so there we go. That game That's came out uh, in, what, 2014? Yeah, it's Diablo. old. Diablo. Yeah, that's when yeah. I got for 2013, maybe. It was 2014. <laughs> Wilson said, boom! <laughs> uh, Kate loves you, Gary. No, Yo, that's good news. Beastly, good we news got something we want to talk about for the future of the show. Yeah, we're, we got an addition to the show that we want to talk about. So we're going to hash this out a little bit. We, we had some ideas, but we want to kind of finalize it on air with chat kind of kind of contributing. But the goal was to have a regularly occurring additional piece of content every Tuesday that we live stream and also upload to YouTube that would be kind of a revolver plays. And the thought was, this is the thought that I had, was that we'd, we'd have one person in the crew pick a game that we could all play together. Now, sometimes, for instance, if Gary wanted to play uh, Werewolves Within uh, in VR, then... You know, unfortunately, Wilson doesn't have VR yet, so we just have to... Fuck, Wilson can't come with us. We're going to try our best to do games that are as inclusive as possible for all four of us, and maybe for chat, too. So if we, you know... Yeah. If one, one week we decide to do 
um, Fortnite 50 versus 50, well, fuck, we need we need <laughs> 46 more people. <laughs> you know who's, what I'm saying? Who's down for some Fortnite? Right, but like the goal is to try and make these games as inclusive as possible for everybody, because not everybody on the show has the same access to consoles or PCs. Um, but also to get a set appointment each week for us to play together. And uh, I think we decided that Beastly would choose first. So what do you guys think about that idea? Like, do you think it's a good idea? Do you, is there any th- additions you'd like to bring? Chat, are there any additions you'd like to bring or any changes you'd like to make? Oh, man. I'm just finding out I'm choosing first shit. Uh... <laughs> oh, you didn't read the, you didn't read the um... Twitter chat, huh? <laughs> <laughs> He's obviously very dedicated to this podcast and the, uh, the, the I didn't see that part. That Shit. Us. I think it's a I fantastic that... idea, and like I said, um, definitely going to be looking into investing into some VR because I think we could do some amazing stuff on those games. Um, there's a lot of really cool multiplayer games on VR that us and chat will just get a really good laugh at. Um, I'd like Star Trek Bridge it's... Crew being one of them, you oh know what I mean? God, I but in the meantime, I, th- I think it's a great idea. I, I think that uh, every Tuesday, Tuesday or whatever day we decide would be perfect for it and confirm it with everyone, make sure everyone's got the game and the desired platform. And So does well, Tuesday work for everybody? Tuesday evening? Yeah, Tuesday's a great day for me. It's always been the day it's that I've to you been guys. most available. I'd like to say as well, if we could... Um, I think we could keep it to a two-hour tight slot and um, the reason for that is I think that it it would force us to pick games that are immediately accessible and fun and we're going to be able to get everyone engaged and it'll be you know fun for you guys to watch as well. What I don't want to do is, is state, right, that all four of us are going to play a game that's going to take eight hours before we get any right. sort of engagement or enjoyment in. So that's right. Be be so nice. We're not playing fucking Risk with you, no matter how much you want to. How'd you know that was the first <laughs> game in my mind, bro? <laughs> um, <laughs> all right, so since this is the first week, and, and I do take full responsibility for this choice. I, I just want to hear you guys' suggestions. Everybody here has games they like. You guys know I'm very flexible and willing to play. As long as I have the game, I'll play it on whatever, PC or, or console. I want the very first week to be as easy as possible for us all to transfer into. So I don't mind forfeiting my hardcore choice. Uh, for something that we as a group can agree on. Now, Brian, uh, Gary and Wilson said in uh, our Twitter chat that uh, it would be a good idea to, you know, there's free-to-play games, there's stuff on PC, there's stuff on PlayStation, uh, there's stuff on Xbox uh, that is very accessible games. I'm totally fine to get down with some of that as well. Uh, and, and as far as, like, triple A's, if we all have them, fine. But if it takes a person not who may, may not have that game that week for them to sit down, I'm totally fine with that as well. So do you guys have any suggestions? What are you guys playing? What what would be fun for us to jump into for the very first uh, Revolver Live uh, game night on Tuesday? Well, uh, I think ever- Fortnite would be a good one. Uh, Fortnite? Royale, Fortnite, because we all already have that. I, I have a great game suggestion, and it's very cheap, and it's very fun. It's on mm-hmm. Steam. It's called Golf with Friends. I like and that idea. It is I've fantastic. You are not like physically golfing. You are the ball. That's all you see. <laughs> and you choose. It's a mini Be golf course ball. with all these no, obstacles. No, 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 no. And we could put. We could, no, 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 no. <laughs> we can. Uh, you can like hit space bar to make your ball jump. So you, it's this uh, mini golf course that is. I mean, they're elaborate. They're. Um, what is it like corkscrew flips and jumping through windmills and the Sphinx has its mouth open and you got to choose the direction and how hard you want to hit the ball. Can you play and four you can... player? Yep. Okay. It's done deal. Yeah. Right. It's six Hopefully bucks. It is. And there's a bunch of different courses. I'm telling you golf sounds boring, but this game, I love golf games is awesome because you can make the ball jump so you can, you could cheat. You could cheese stuff. Like it's it's fantastic. You could hit the other player's ball, so you could like make it to where you're ahead ten strokes, and you just want to screw the other person over. Like it's it's great. Okay, so I'm looking at it now. Wow, it does. Look, it looks like a lot of fun. It's fun as hell. It's uh, that's just a suggestion. Um, I used to play Planet Mini Golf on PS4 years ago, and that was one of our favorite games for me and my my whole family. We used to we used to use the PlayStation Move to actually do it, kind of like real golf, but right. It was, a lot of fun. Yeah, this important. 
point raised by Dakota Smooth there, Wilson. How's the fucking in it? Yeah, how is the fucking? You didn't even um, it up, It's pretty. That's a that's a very good valid question. And since you could hit the other player's ball, so it's ball to ball action. There's plenty there of is ball to ball action. Oh, wait, that's a win win. <laughs> it's in there. Slapping right? all um, over that. We game. can also do, do something like maybe once a month where we put a poll out on Twitter and people decide. Or yeah, you guys can decide what we play. You know, um, but for the oh. first week, we should uh, we should find out a game that we all already have or something, even something simple like PUBG, Fortnite. Oh, Mount Your Friends is a great suggestion. Mount Your Friends is genital, an awesome game. Genital jousting is good, but that's banned from Twitch, so we yeah, can't play is. that one. Oh, lame. Twitch, you're lame. Yeah. Dude, Twitch is lame. They just need to make a Twitch version, like a setting where you can click. I know it's not as good, but you could at least I mean, play we, the game. We could, banned from Twitch? Really? We yeah. could stream it on some other unscrupulous Fucking sites, but Twitch. unfortunately not Twitch. Um, on the topic of um, announcements, again, we've got two more to close off the show because we are running hot and I do like to sleep. Um, we've got a giveaway. So I was on the um, line to Pagadix.com, hot on the press to their multi-billion dollar CEO head office. Um, and they have informed us that they will graciously, graciously be giving away one bag of dicks to a lucky, lucky listener or viewer of the podcast. Um, now, I'm kind of open to how we want to do this. Now, what do we want to do? Do we want to have a the, the funniest comment on YouTube or iTunes or Podbean? And maybe we pick one across the three and we choose to go there. How do you guys think it's best? I to, think that the, the funniest review on Podbean or iTunes should be the winner. I think that you know that, that would be a great way to not only promote what we're doing here at Revolver Live, but to also get people engaged in the process in order to get a bag of dicks. I think it's a it's a win win or ball on ball action. Mm. Fantastic. So again, we are offering. We're going to go ahead with that way. You've now got a week to enter. So this time next week, uh, we'll be looking at all the reviews that came in. So that will be on the. 18th of December will be closing this competition to win the exclusive and fantastic prize of a bag of dicks as modeled by Beastly and Briar on the YouTube version. So yeah, just make sure that, um, that you have private messages on, on any comments that you leave because I'll need to, a way to reach you guys. Um, I can normally comment back on there, but, um, yeah, leave a review, make us laugh. Um, all of us will have a scout over and, yeah, win yourself a bag of dicks and you can either have them sent to you or a recipient of your choice um, and they can get a bag of dicks for free. So please do head to That's iTunes value. or Podbean and leave a review. Uh, that was that one announcement. Second announcement, um, and this is something that we promised early in the life of the pod and put down and haven't revisited. I've now got to a point where I can do it and I know Willie has capability to do it, and I'm sure BC will be there soon with us, but streaming yes. on the Revolver Live channel. Uh, I finally got my acting gear uh, and have a position to stream myself. I know Wilson has the capability to stream and can do it. Um, we have a separate Twitch channel called um, Twitch TV forward slash Revolver underscore live, is it? Or is it Revolver Live? Not sure. One of the two. It's not important at the moment. We're not going to drive you there. We'll just go to both till you see us. We will certainly be letting you know when we go live. But um, we now have the capability. So when we have the Revolver Play sessions, we'll be multi-perspective. At least one of the other hosts will also have a second perspective up for you. So you can see Briar's perspective and someone else. Uh, in addition to the Revolver Plays, all of the hosts here. You can watch um, me play it, or you can watch the guy who's good at the game play. <laughs> <laughs> well, all the hosts have access to that channel it's not just me all of us have the stream key so you never know it might be one day that um we won't have stream schedules obviously we're not full-time streamers but uh you know you might get a notification that there's a guy going to come on talk about dicks for a couple of hours and play something random probably with japanese panties but again we'll see how long that channel lasts before it's banned i'm going to say a week uh, yeah. it's, i'm excited it's to it there huh, Gary? <laughs> I'm really excited into that. Uh, I, I do want to say before we go um, that holding this box, it is a very well put together piece of kit. Uh, this is like a jewelry box. It's it, you can see embroidering on the top of the box. It looks like something you'd have, you know, an engagement ring or some very expensive jewelry. And there's a if lot. If this of comes in the mail, you're not going to be clued into the fact that you just got sent a bag of dicks until you no, see the bag totally, of dicks. Totally won't. This would. 
catch someone off guard like a mug, like a dick to the face. Uh, this is. <laughs> I mean, I'm just looking at the craftsmanship. Bagadicks.com. Use the discount code Revolver Live to get your discount and your magnificent bag of dicks. Bags of dicks. Who? I mean, who says you have to get one? You can get seven, eight. Get a plethora. Just like the colors of the dick. Plethora of color. It's like looking into a, a rainbow of joy. Dicks everywhere of every color. It's, it's beautiful. All right, guys. That's going to wrap up this show. Thank you so much for hanging out today. I had a blast. It was a good show, guys. It's a good show. Appreciate it, man. Nice, nice I love show. it. Dude. Look nice forward show. to this every week. This is a Are lot we allowed of fun. to say that ourselves? I think so. Don't the viewers 100%. have to tell us it was a good show? Guys, was it a good show? We have no. to believe it first. If I, mean, I have, I, here's how I judge it. If I have fun making the show, I feel like it was a good show because I had fun. If I didn't have fun, I'm like, well, that Shit. sucked. <laughs> that sucked. <laughs> we also have confirmation that the Twitch channel is Revolver Live, all one word. Oh, good. <laughs> Thanks, we Twitch. We know what our Twitch channel is. There we go. <laughs> All right, so this week we'll be playing... Fuck, I forgot the name of the game. Golf, Golf with, with friends. friends? Golf with Friends on Tuesday night. Do we know what time? We'll probably uh, have to talk about the timing exactly. It, it'll probably be between 5 and 6. Uh, I couldn't imagine it being later than 6. I can always be here by 5 and ready to go by 5.15 or 5.20, so maybe 5.30 to 7.30. You guys know I'm flexible. We could shoot maybe around the same time as Revolver, close to it, but It'll just on Tuesday. Work. Is that Gary? too late yeah. for Gary? Yeah, probably work. We'll see. I mean, if I have to dip out before the end of the stream, then we can golf with friends for an hour, and then it can be the Revolver Trio for the remaining hour. Are you going to turn or, into a pumpkin after with, midnight? Golf with I one do. less friend. I've got, I can't leave Steve in bed waiting for me that long. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Him, man. <laughs> Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week.